Hello, I'm Peachy. Hello, I'm Jeff. And I'm Patrick. And today we are joined by Luke Evans, body double. Stephen Box from Vanguard Tactics. I always say that. I just I think you look like Luke Evans and my wife does. That was the f- <laughs> I think that was the first ever thing you said to me, yeah. actually. <laughs> you literally came up to me at Warhammer and you were like, my wife thinks you look like Luke Evans. I was like, hi, Peachy, great to meet you. <laughs> I'll touch on it a little bit uh, with some confusing from another uh, chat show because I got really confused because he wasn't about something. But first of all, thank you and welcome for coming on to the thanks for having me to the sidetrack show. Yeah, I think we should just call it sidetrack from now on. Anyone yeah, likes that? Pretty much. So Vanguard Tactics, Stephen Box, Steve, yes. Steve-O, but not Steph. Stephen, Stephen. We'll go with Stephen. Stephen, Stephen's Steven. good. Yes. Is that Stephen with a PH or it's, a V? It's a PH. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just in case anyone's unsure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and Vanguard Tactics in in. As much of an introduction as you like, what, what, what is it you do? Who oh. are you and what do you do? What do I do? Um, yeah, people ask me this and I'm like, oh, I just teach people how to play Warhammer. Um, but I think there's a bit more to it than that. <laughs> I just teach people how to paint Warhammer, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, what what do we do? And that's a real interesting question. And you should probably ask my mum. She wouldn't be able to tell you, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She'd be like, I don't know how he makes money. Of what he's with Dolly like. Men. I don't know what he does. <laughs> I think it's about time he grows up. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I get that. Yeah. But not from a mum, from my from wife, probably. She's so, still playing. <laughs> what do we do? I think, to some extent, I try and help people have a much better outlook hmm. and really have a much better quality of life in terms of their mental health. And I think I just use Warhammer as an excuse. Hmm. To, as the vehicle really to drive that so yeah the channel really is our kind of just expression of playing games with your friends yeah. enjoying a fair balance game um, and we've kind of used Vanguard Tactics as a bit of a way to I think challenge some of the misconceptions around playing in a tournament yeah. um, about trying we've tried to change the face of what sportsmanship and fair play looks like because um, I remember when I first got into the game and I, people were like do you want to go to a tournament? Yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, yeah. you must be cheesy. <laughs> oh, or <yeah>. beardy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. what? I just want to go into play in a tournament. Oh, no, the filthy things. Filthy things. And it was like people would spit on you if they knew you were going to a tournament. <laughs> and they were like, and if you said in your local gaming group, oh, can I try out my tournament list? And they were like, you're not bringing a knight, are you? You're not bringing any of that Forge World stuff. And it was just like a legit concern from people. So I was like, hang on a minute, something's got to change here. Surely this can't be right. So I was probably one of those people. Probably. You, yeah. I think it was, you, I remember the hashtags you started to create, actually. Yeah, it's probably you. But, um, <laughs> me creating hashtags, that's definitely not me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a Luddite. Yeah. So yeah, what do, we, what do we do? We just help people play the awesome game of 40k. Yeah. Whether they're getting into it for the first ever time, um, or they want to, you know, become an amazing opponent we just help people do that yeah yeah i mean so my, my experience of tournament gaming has been very much the bad side of it apart from a couple when it's been doubles i always find doubles is quite fun because you can bounce off your friend and there's most people are there for a fun time not, yeah the grand tournaments were always like the ones that always used to give me the willies because i'd go there going i need to know these rules really well because i'm going to get like people cheating trying to like yeah change things and, and i did experience it. i only did lord of the rings because Sorry, you're going to hate this. It's the best game system out there. Okay. <laughs> Why am I going to hate that? I don't know. I'm not sure. A lot of people shoot, shoot me down. In, not all, but a fair few people shoot me down in the, in the comments because I, ne- I have an opinion. Peachy. <laughs> we will take these people on together. <laughs> we, them. we will. Should we make one game to rule them all? <laughs> We're going to do it. I still so, need to play Warcraft with you. I like the idea of a fellowship. Something no, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get off this topic just yet. Okay, yeah, right. sure. <laughs> so, do you know how I actually started playing Warhammer? Would it be Lord of the Rings? I walked past a Games Workshop shop, and there was a Lord of the Rings sign in there. Ooh. Yeah? And the Fellowship of the Ring had just been released. Oh, that was my era of being in retail. This is good. Carry yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. And I walked into this store in Plymouth, and whoever that manager was, or sales, sales assistant maybe... They're a hero. Mm. They helped me get into the game of Warhammer eventually because they were like, do you want to play as Aragon? I was like, yes. You didn't get barred as an option then, did you? Such a shame. No, all I could... (laughs) I know, before my time, right? I hadn't peaked at this point. So anyway, I was Aragon and they were like, do you want to kill the Keytrol? Yes, I'll kill the Keytrol. I was hooked. I found Warhammer eventually because yeah. it was like the little way in. Somebody was selling their Warhammer and it was kind of the same game. I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. Mm. Found a local, you know, and it all, so it all started with Lord of the Rings. At school, 
I made a to scale model of Helm's Deep. Oh, yes. Seriously? Seriously. Do you have fi- any pictures or anything? I do have a picture. Oh, do you amazing. want to see it? Yes. All right. Well, we'll put it up on the uh, screen now. I'll whip it out. Yeah. And shared. Yeah. We'll get that yeah. definitely on the screen. Right. This was a that- scale Helm's Deep. Yeah. I actually. one to one scale. Please tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, I couldn't uh, acquire, I'm going to say acquire that much uh, PVA and polystyrene from the graphics department from my school. So um, we had to scale it down a little bit. Um, so. Quit a talk. <laughs> yeah. Like the idea that there was no more school assemblies because it was just in there. <laughs> Yeah. Deep. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. everyone. Steve's yeah. lining them all up, right? But it took me. I worked out. It took me over a hundred hours to build this thing. That's amazing. Um, wow. I've got a picture of a. You know, like back then, we didn't have iPhones and stuff, did yeah. we? We had to like the roller thing, and you had to get it sent off for. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So Your this disposable is, cameras here. So this oh, is right, yeah, yeah. this is a picture of my Helm's Deep, which is of a picture taken in the garden. Oh wow! That you got skills. I was fifteen. Oh. This bridge compartment used to come off and the door used to go out and the wall... You're seeing this right now. That, that, this is happening, right? People are yeah, seeing this on the screen yeah. as this is happening. So, Oh, wow. That is... That's amazing. He's got deep in wall. He's got the causeway that comes apart. Have you got oh, the little wow. postern gate that uh, Aragorn comes out with Gimli? He's like, oh, you're going to have to toss me. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. That was just... Steve, Stephen. That's that, awesome, man. So every single brick was put on with a... It's a piece of card that I just cut out and stuck on. That's amazing. Do you ever yeah. take it to the, like the stores or anything to to show them? Because they they'd love that. Peach, it's six foot by. F- Doesn't matter. <laughs> six, get a van. <laughs> I was driving a van at fifteen and get a van. <laughs> <laughs> get pulled over. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, you, you, with a moped you shouldn't be driving oh, yeah, that on the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't yeah. actually I did have a good video on getting like scenery into like the back of your top box. So yeah, you check that out. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Sorry, yeah. Maybe maybe, you, maybe you didn't have that in mind when you built it. For, um, <laughs> so my mum actually wouldn't let me keep it anymore. She was like, "It's too big. It's got to yeah. go." So I had to give it away. Oh, that where's the end up? I don't know. So if somebody's watching this and you've got my Helm's Deep, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if I can buy it back, yeah. I would love to. I, I had, uh, not quite to the same level, but I made a board for workshop and uh, it happens and it's fair, but eventually I have a bit of a cull of scenery. Um, there's a guy who does Goblin Green Bases on Instagram. He was asking about some old scenery. He mentioned, that, Do, does the old scenery exist? And I was like, no, they tend to have a cull and bin. And there was like a manager who didn't really have that kind of attachment of like, oh, it's just taking up space, burn it. As opposed to giving it out to, to shops and stuff. And I yeah. did, um, it was for Storm of Magic, there was like a board with like floating towers and stuff. And it was all made of resin. It was the Empire, Witch Fate Tour and Dreadstone Blight, which was like ruined Wizard's Towers. And I did this bit to go on the hill because the realm about you can make like a full circle hill. Yeah, and I remember the I one made actually. The footprint of this to go on the top of it. it was like a big sort of like board thing that went on the top. It all disappeared. I assumed it gone to the bin, and then someone told me it was in a gaming club, and I was like, "Which ga- I can't for the life of me. I don't even know what gaming club it is, but we need to find it. I need to find it because I love that piece of scenery. It's right, I was making. Can it. we just make this podcast about find their old stuff? <laughs> yeah, please find yeah. out our lost scenery. <laughs> yeah, we'll call well, it. The, really we'll call then. it the Lost and Found podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So from now on, we'll never apologise for playing Lord of the Rings. No, okay? no, no. You're you right. didn't yeah. really. call me out on that. That's yeah, good. I did. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's a strong. You judged strong... me, didn't you? I did. I, you I were came like... in thinking, why well, you do tournament plays? He's some sweaty forty. Yeah, he's some sweaty forty k player. You have no appreciation for the finer things in life. <laughs> we, we did a, a, a video. I mean, obviously, it's you know you got to get those the, for the algorithm and stuff like that, which is is Warcry the best game in, in the in the actual video. I say best fantasy skirmish game, and I talk about Lord of the Rings and More Time being quite up there as well. Oh, More uh, Time, More Time, love More Time. That wins every time. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. If they read it, I don't understand why it's not been revamped. I don't know. It's I'm mad. Surprised it hasn't been revamped just off this back of this blooming podcast because he wants to love like, it. I mean, here all the and, time. Uh, Andy Hoare loves uh, Necromunda, so he was like very much like, we need to get on and get this redone. I don't know if anyone out there really loves that much <laughs> with, with more time in Forge World, especially games, but someone needs to get on it. And maybe it is. Maybe it's like down the like line. come back in with the old world. You maybe. Know maybe it's a skirmish game, but it's it's such a good rule system. And for me, Warcry fills that, that void. And I've been playing a friend. Um, you, have you got your old more time rule book? Yeah. I've got mine. Yeah, I've got mine as well. I've got guys on square bases. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I propose, gentlemen, a game of more time in my studio. We'll live stream the entire thing. Oh, I'm in for that. Yeah? Should we make yeah. this happen? Yeah. Sisters of Sigma are coming down to smite some... Uh, do you have them? Oh, do you? Right. 
I've got no models, but I've got a rule book and I got a playing space. Well, you know what? You know what I can do. What's if that? You, if you're into painting, I have a box set of Chaos Possessed that's not been opened. Really? In its shrink wrap. It's the old fanatic oh. uh, packaging. So I can send like that to watching you. Watching makeup, being mad at being made, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can send you some sets. This is the start of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got I was just going to get some, you know. Uh, no, I've got the actual possessed wall. You get some pistol ears guys with their, you know, what are they, Marienburgers? Marienburgers. You've got yeah. Reichlanders and Middenheimers as their the main go tos, but you could do what you want. You could do literally any city state and just use one of the. Yeah. We had Gary on the other week, and he built a lot. He designed a lot of the Madden. Yeah, of, yeah, a lot, a lot of that, that era stuff. He, he done. Yeah. He done all the um, Sisters of Sigma, um, which I've got. So, yeah. Do you know what we'll do? We'll end up making this really epic cinematic battle report of more time, and it'll get like one view. <laughs> <laughs> And it'll just be us. <laughs> That's just watching it on my wife. Yeah. That, that, really that, one person, that, that one person that watched it will have really loved they it. They would have loved it, though. Yeah. Totally and that's yeah. when it's worth it. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. 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 As long as we get 100% like ratio and a comment for every... We've made it, right? Well, what yeah. we need to do is say more time is the best game ever, better than Warcry, and then we'll get loads of people going, no, it's not, and give us reasons. And, you know, for yeah. the algorithm. For the algorithm. More right. time's better than 40k. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. yeah, yeah, yeah. That will solve it. There, yeah. there we go. Yeah, or just say tenth edition is terrible, and then see so say, "Well, so we're playing more time instead." But then, <laughs> like you know, you get you get the negative clickbait, and then well, yeah. we got that with the Warcry one, didn't we? Which is which is good fun. So I've had a few I mean, I think if you're a YouTuber this day and you're not doing negative clickbait, are you even YouTubing? Apparently, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what, that yeah. seemed to be the trend well, anyway. It, that that was kind of the idea with that. It's like we. One, it was a milestone for us because we got raid sponsoring us, and we've had a few people comment about that. But, yeah, um, it was just a bit of fun, and honestly, even if people are watching this, they won't believe it. I actually quite like the game. <laughs> <laughs> is this raid shadow? Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. like the game for for one sole reason, and that is the character index. Such a resource for like color schemes, tattoos. So sometimes when I'm like doing tattoos, I'm like what barbarians. Is it? So it's like a mobile game. You you build a small band of warriors. Well, it's actually as you can collect. We can pay for this. We're getting paid. No, no, no. 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 This is all free. This is all free. Well, we need to immediately stop this then. Yeah. Okay. Get them on the phone. I'm I'm happy to talk about it because it's a great game. Okay. I mean, some people, it's one of those where it's pay to win. So if you put financial into it, you you get characters quicker and you get more. Right. You buy gems and you can level up faster. Yeah. 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 But I'm just one of those that can't be asked for that. And I just slowly build it. Slog it. And I find it's a lot more rewarding yeah that way um i mean you can all put the cheats on can't you on yeah, like exactly. you know you, you know when you back in the day when you were playing um what was grand theft auto sin city or, or yeah, you know yeah. san andreas you're like i'll yeah. stick all the cheats on you're like god mode got a tank and like yes it's fun for 10 minutes yeah actually i kind of preferred constantly That's doing a mission in dying yeah. uh, actually there's something about that yeah because when you finally did it you're like oh yes i completed that mission i, I remember i know we're going on to like computer game stuff and there's a few patrons asking about that um you know, your favorite computer game which we might hit in a minute but i used to have you ever heard of skyrim you know heard of skyrim yes. yeah. 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 so uh, <laughs> there was like a a thing at a time, I don't know if it was, I read it in like PC Gamer, which was build a rubbish character, make them ugly as possible, give him a dagger, and then just fight, because there's like an abandoned farm somewhere between like one place and the next. Treat that as your home, and it literally just like farm the crops and go and sell them, and go back, grow the crops, farm them, go back and sell them, and make a living being a farmer, and see how long it is before you get killed. So you just play through the game doing that. And I got killed by a rat in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> That's not video game. That's just a job. Yeah. <laughs> was, this the, was this the precursor to farming simulator? I guess. But it was just like, I'm going to give this a go because this sounds wild. And well, I was like, it's well, like I've a... got a load of like uh, melons and I've got like um, some carrots and I've got some tomatoes and I've got a gourd. And I was like, I'm going to go off to Rifton and sell it. <laughs> Little skeever rat comes out and just kills me. <laughs> Oh, so that's that other one, my entrepreneurs son. of the future. Yeah. <laughs> my son plays Elden Ring, and he says that there's people that just go into Elden Ring and just try to see if they can play it all the way through, and just like in a pair of underpants and nothing else on the sword. Nice. And he's going, yeah. it's the hardest game. And you're going, why? You I've think- tried doing that with life. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah. well, well, it's the detention cell section that's quite hard when you have to walk past the school. See, you see that I actually got all right in just the underwear for quite some time of my life it you know became quite a uh, business venture of mine so um, oh really yeah Tell anyway about that. we'll go on to the un- <laughs> the underwear stories another time yeah yeah so vanguard tactics predominantly is uh would you say uh, a educational yeah channel yeah we are a essentially an educational provider i would call us hmm. um so we've got our courses whether they're you know like 
learning to play for the first ever time, or maybe you want to really take your game to the best level it can be and take those next logical steps for you, then we've got our academy course. So um, yeah, I'd say we're an educational company. We try to throw in some entertainment, but we're still working on that. It's not really our forte or strength, but you know, at least you know where you're at, right? Yeah, well, I've been, I was watching the How to Play 10th yeah. uh, uh, last night just to swat up on what it's going to be like because I've, I've played 9th, like, I'd say it was one game, it was like a couple of games to do, like the test for Warmer Plus. Um, so the rules are pretty vague, but the, the, the talks are in what you're doing is actually yeah. really useful. There, there's some terminology which is like new to me. I, I think like the morale side of it's got a different... It's term- called Battle Shock. Battle Shock, that was it, mm. yeah. So I was just like, what's this now? But you explain it all. And there's a bit where one of your buddies uh, is like, "You need sixes to get this." Thing. How did you? How did you even roll those those two sixes? If you got three sixes, that would have been really bad. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was final against the screamer killer or something like that. But but it was really good to to watch that. And I was like skipping back, going right, let's let's understand what that means and stuff. But because I've got an understanding of forty k, there's a lot of not assumed knowledge from my side, but I, I get a lot of what's going off. Yeah. So that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really useful for someone that's probably never played as well because you yeah. very well explained. That's what we wanted it to be, fast-paced enough that it's not too in-depth. It's about kind of the broad strokes mm. of this is what you kind of expect from a game. Um, because really, I think when we look at a lot of the how-to-play tutorials um, that I've seen in the past, they can dive far too much into the minutia too quickly. And actually, at a start playing, who's really going to be watching that? It's, yeah. it's a complete beginner. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that's why we, we put out that video to be, yeah, broad strokes, bit of a gist of it. Mm. And then obviously, hopefully in our battle reports, we can then back that up with a bit more detail and uh, using some of the same graphics and stuff. So it's a continuous theme of just layering education. I think like when you get into the game, though, it must feel like, and if you've ever, if you're ever in a, like a coffee shop talking about Warhammer to your friend, just have a quick look over your shoulder at what something they're looking at you like, what are they talking about? <laughs> we need to call the police. Yeah, it's like a different language, isn't it? Yeah. He's just said he's killed someone. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he's wearing his skull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's going on? He right went now? on a full rampage and uh, <laughs> completely obliterated his opponent in what sounds like a turn. It seems quite... Uh, anyway, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> you know, you start talking about these things. Oh, yeah, Rabute Gulliman or uh, whatever, however you pronounce his name, Abaddon, Abaddon, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's both. Whatever. Depends where you are on the uh, galaxy. I, yeah. I reckon, yeah. But I am normally told on YouTube how to say it oh, yeah, quite yeah. frequently. The the faction for mm. the, um, the the dynasty for the Necrons, the Nylak dynasty, uh, both me and Matt Ward came up with that. Well, he came up with the name and it's the Nylak dynasty. Right. I get correct on that pronunciation. I was like, Matt Ward came up with it and he told me the name and this is the name it is. So yeah. you can correct it as much as you like. That's that's how we called it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, so it's all this weird terminology, right? So how do we help people that get into the game f- not feel like they're like, when you learn anything for the first time, you don't want to feel stupid. Yeah. I think that's people's biggest concern. It's like the pedantry of it all, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like when I used to help people get into the gym for the first time, it was always like, well, I don't want to feel stupid when I'm in the gym. Mm. Nobody likes feeling stupid. Yeah. So how do we get rid of that and make it acceptable to, you know, get things wrong, make mistakes, and they become learning opportunities rather than a sense of like a barrier and gatekeeping. Like, yeah, I ain't got time for that. So, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, from my side, like from the content we put out, they do a lot of paint guides. My painting forte is speed and armies. Um, and I know that field quite well. Even now I get like comments like, that's not how you paint that. That's not how you do that technique. That's not how that's done. And I'm just like, it's fine. It's an opinion of someone that's probably a bit more advanced. But usually those people don't tend to comment like that because they understand and they know. So usually it's just someone out there just wants to be edgy. Let's be same. real. Yeah. They probably don't paint. <laughs> probably. Or just being edgy because they can. Yeah. yeah. That with like the, the yes. real side of things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you would not be- Well, you probably can believe, but um, yeah. From Ladies Man 227 in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Pro tip, you should do this. I'm like, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, the best one was ever like they were like oh pro tip you should do your YouTube channel like this and my reply was pro tip start one yeah then yeah, come yeah. and talk to me yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll yeah. Watch. I promise I'll watch yeah, yeah. you know just uh, when you're starting out you've got like no resources I mean it's certainly for me anyway I came from a fitness background where I had a PT business uh, like an online PT business or whatever you want to call it so I started with a webcam mm. and then I had a handy yeah. cam and then I had a webcam and a handy cam. And then it was like, Oh, I've got another camera now. And yeah, it just, yeah. it's evolved and built up. And 
I had to learn all these things about how does the A10 Mini work and, yeah. you know, how do microphones work and how do you integrate it all together in videos, in F numbers, in ISOs, in, oh, oh my God. So, <laughs> and then people go, oh, you actually got Battleshock wrong on oh, it, eight minutes and four, you forgot to take a Battleshock check. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm yeah. just trying to make a video. Yeah, yeah, and to help people as much as you can. I mean, it's, it's the same with, like, I, I guess, with your channel does that because you, you're, you're educational. When, and you probably experienced this your first time you went into workshop, you played Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Against the Cape Charles Aragon. I imagine Smashed it. the staff member fudged some rules so you enjoyed it. Because that's the job of an intro is to, wow. to, to, I know, it's, but it's, Revelations. I know, I know, but you're not, if you, if, and I've had this. Well, I used to have a, sold. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just brought I, his entire world. To I, because I, I, you know what? I, Ever since then, Aragorn's never killed a cave troll. <laughs> <laughs> they sold me a light. If you use Boromir, no, yeah. that would have been different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only in a two-on-one situation, though. He blows that horn, and all of a sudden, you're like, I'm just invincible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they all yeah. back off. It's yeah. Like, oh, I got you now, you bugger. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You, you, you spend, spend those six. Sean Bean it again. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't get Sean Bean onto the channel, I'm gonna. That, that is my life goal: is to get Sean Bean onto this channel. Let's do it. I'm gonna yeah. do it. We'll get him in to play more time with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Or we'll bring him to play Lord of the Rings and make him be a different character. Yes. That's what we oh, yeah, the yeah. ultimate tree the character you always wanted to be. I was like, I want a bit Kerf troll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dave Andrews. Uh, I was chatting to him the other day, and he was like saying because um, I was on about like oh, I'd love to get Sean Bean on, and he said, I'm sure. I think it's called uh, Sealed Knot. But one of his early m movies, films, or it could have been, not, I, I think when Saturday Comics was his first, when, like Sheffield footballer, that's what he's into. Um, but he said it's called Sealed Knot, and he's, I think he's a teacher or professor, and uh, he's a war gamer, mm -hmm. paints war game. Nerd. Nerd, nerd. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm sure that, that's, a, that's one of his early videos. I was like, yeah, so... Because I did a chat GPT, like how to get Sean Bean onto the channel in a DM on Instagram. <laughs> and it just filled it all the information I ever needed. And I was like, I'm sending that. <laughs> see what happens. Any reply? No, yet. Do you worry, though, that like you'd have a Harrison Ford Han Solo moment where they're like, they say, oh, who do you think would win in a fight? Han Solo or this person? And he goes, I don't care. Yeah, like, no. he's just not. But they're like, how do you fly the Millennium Falcon? He was like, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, he's... I don't think, <laughs> weirdly, because he's done like loads of documentaries on like stuff, oh, like, like okay. uh, Waterloo and stuff. I don't think he would say stuff like that because, I mean, it's, it's the hero side of things, you know, you never meet your heroes and whatever, but... yeah. He knows where he's come from. Shall I get Luke Evans on my channel? Yeah. Oh, we got Boromir versus Bard. Yeah. In a game. <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win, Boromir or Bard? <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Totally. Yeah. This let's, is wild. Let's make this happen. And I, was, I was saying to Liz, my wife, the other day, I was like, you know, a lot of people want to get Henry Cavill on the show. I just, I, no. That's, Sean Bean. That, Sean Bean. Yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's top tier. Oh, yeah. he just comes in and we're like, we didn't choose you and we kick him out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Charles and Manda. Uh, I completely lost the thing yeah. I was going to say. Well, Damn it. I have a question, uh, sure. if I may. Yeah, um, on Papering the Back. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is, and it, is, I, this, is this going how you expected it to go? Oh, yeah. This, like, is, like, yeah. Yeah. this is standard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a mess, and then I try and bring it back to um, And then me and Jeff ruin to it something. No, which is fine. Uh, it's what the folks tune in You've for. You've got a fantastic beard, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I grew it he's myself. Got good, he's got a well done. <laughs> he's got a good barber. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, uh, uh, so there's a statement online that I, I have to say, I have no idea whether it's true or false, and I wanted to ask you your opinion on it. Go on. Um, and people say that the tournament scene is having too much of an influence on how rules are written. So people are saying for 10th edition yeah. that the tournament scene is ruining it for casual players. Yeah. Now, I have... I have to be honest, I have no idea whether that's true or what that even means. Um, but I wanted to ask a professional about it. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think um, to some extent, like there mu there's going to be some truth in that. Yeah. Um, I think the issue that we've got is if there is a um, ever going to be an interaction in the game that is unpleasant to play against, like a really uninteractive army. Yeah. So... To give you an example, um, back in Ninth Edition, there was Deathwing Terminators, right? Mm. And they were they had transhuman, like you could only ever wound them on a four plus. Yeah. So regardless of you know, so if you don't play forty k, by the way, this basically means 
However good your rules are, they don't matter. Mm. If you can't roll a four up on a six-sided dice, you can't even hurt these things. And then they get a four up save to ignore it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, wow, yeah. So you've got to hit them, you've got to wound them, you, they can save it. Um, and then they had secondary missions that allowed them just to stand still and score points effectively. Yeah. So you've got this completely untouchable, unkillable army yeah. that just stands there. So your skill of a player is being able to buy the models, paint the models, yeah. and put them down on the table, and you just leave them there, really. <laughs> you just go, cool, well, I'll win. Thanks. <laughs> that sounds great. This sounds good. Uh, I'll just roll some four-ups. Can you roll four-ups in Can I? Sounds like my way of playing games. <laughs> you're like... Four hammer. Yay. Four. Yeah. So when that interaction's in the game, you're like, well, the people that are going to abuse it are the people in tournaments, mm. right? That's where it will be found out. Mm. And then, you know... Feedbacks given the Games Workshop, they look at that and go, yeah, that's probably not great for people because it's a terrible playing experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the issue is you've got, you create an echo chamber, right? So if you think about most of the player based podcasts, battle reports, there's a fair few of them are ran by sweaty competitive players, right? Mm. Including myself. You know, we'll talk about, you know, this is a cool combo, you know, this works really well together, whatever. Um, so then that filters down. Mm. It filters down to the, you know, it, we only have to look at football, right? You see, mm. you know, 12 year old kids in the park copying Christian Ronaldo's yeah. tricks. Yeah. They want to buy his football boots. Yeah. They want to wear his shirt. So the fundamentals of the game uh, or the foundations of any sport or or is the participation level, right? That is the foundations. And the bigger the grassroots, the better the elite will be at the top. But the elite will influence what happens down those yeah. other, you know, pyramid, essentially, of performance. So, yes, to some extent, competitive play is influencing the rules of the game. Yeah. But that's to essentially stop you being a casual... And I've played against some casual narrative fluffy players who go oh, I've got my really narrative Deathwing Terminator army you're like yes it's real narrative this one where yeah. you just stand and do nothing and win the game yeah, like yeah. What, are, <laughs> what are we trying to achieve here like what is the purpose of this game because yeah. it's um, it's not fun for me yeah. you might have a load of fun out of this but yeah I'm not here. For, I want a fun too. Yeah. I want a game where we have to interact on objectives and I want a game where you can kill me off and I can kill you off and we're going to see what happens over there. And if you commit too early, then I can counter attack you in, you know, that's the game we want to play. Yeah, yeah. So it all depends really on the competitive scene. Yes. will bring things to attention. Yeah. Um, and then games workshop will react to that. And yes, it will influence. So let's say you were running just five Deathwing terminators, for example, and then they get a bit nerfed. Yeah. Sure, that hurts those five Deathwing Terminators, but that's because you didn't spam them yeah. like absolute crazy, like the sweaty tournament players did. Mm. And um, the other issue we've got, which has been a massive rant of mine, is players... So um, Games Workshop typically look at balance of the game based on win percentage. Yeah. Mm. You know, you've heard them talk about... Yes. 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 So providing that the, the a factions between 45 and 55, they're kind of okay with it. Yeah. All right. MetaWatch, isn't it? Their show, they talk about it all. And, yeah. yeah. There's an issue with this as a Ooh. general concept. Yeah. And, you know, I've been quite vocal about this. It's not something new. Meta chasers. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is you've got some of the best players in the world who will be looking for, and this isn't like, this is completely different to cheating when I'm about to say this. Yeah. They are looking for the best advantage possible. Okay, within the confines of the rules yeah, of the game, yeah. right? That is essentially, yeah, Krishna Ronaldo, he wears some pretty decent football boots. He's not wearing football boots from 60 years ago, right? He's yeah. looking for the lightest weight football boots that will keep grip, won't lose the studs, you name it, right? He goes to the gym, you know, so he's doing all the things in the context and confines of what the sport will allow. Yeah. yeah. So bringing a tooled up finely tuned well thought about army list is part of that yeah it's yeah. part of the skill of the game being able to identify where the meta is adjusting your army list to tailor it and suit it right fine so then you've got the best players in the world that will typically have a higher win rate themselves regardless of the faction they play mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a faction will become optimal and they'll all jump to it yeah so then now you've got a situation where this faction's win rate will instantly go up yeah because all the best players now are also playing this top army. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's been tweaked to be like... Yeah. Ah, 
now we've got a problem, right? Because now the data is slightly um, misinformed yeah. because what we have is a, a time and period where that faction essentially is being, their, their results are being blown up by the percentage of players that are now joining it. Yeah. So when there's a nerf to that army and it's no longer the best thing, mm. those meta chasers will ch jump onto a new yeah. army yeah. and because all they're looking for is ITC points or rankings or whatever. Yeah. Whatever they want to do, it's fine. Um, then all of a sudden that faction is nerfed and the player base that have always played it feel like they've been impacted negatively by it yeah okay because a lot of those things have now been brought to light yeah. hey this isn't very interactive we'll remove it so i'm i'm of opinion that i think we should look at tournament results personally and adjust how we look at it from both a quantitative and qualitative perspective mm -hmm. to look at army lists and think right well this unit is being taken more times than any other unit for example desolation marines yeah Personally, this is just my personal opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of the look of the model. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't do it for me. Yeah, okay, yeah. like weirdly, now, you're not on your own. <laughs> <laughs> one, or two, one or two yeah. other people have mentioned it. <laughs> well, you know, and that's just a, a style that I don't yeah like. Yeah, it's right? an aesthetic. It doesn't sit well with me as a, as a space marine. For me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you give me a sanguinary guard model, and I'm like, hell yeah. yeah he's yeah. got a six pack. He's you know he's looking yeah. good. Yeah. So anyway. Like eight bound, oh my god! Well, they were awesome models. So it it could have even been the same designer or whatever, and that's nothing. It's just my personal opinion. Yeah, Desolation Marines sold pretty well. Yeah, okay, but they got some really good rules. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So when there's more Desolation Marines at a tournament than there are tournament players, we've probably got a problem with Desolation Marines. Yeah, that's a very like from a qualitative perspective, we can look at that and go, hang on a minute. So the top ten army lists that won that event all had thirty Desolation Marines in their lists. Hmm. What's the problem here? Well, yeah. It's probably them Desolation Marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Space Marines? Not necessarily. Mm. It could just be in particular that unit, right? Yeah. So how do we... Yeah, to answer your question. Yeah. Is it being influenced? Yes. For the greater good of the game, I would still say yes. Yeah. But I do feel, you know, that I have empathy for sure for those players that didn't spam th those units. They yeah. don't meta chase. They love their faction, which mm. is why when I go to tournaments now, I will never take the most crooked, broken thing because for a few reasons, A, I want to show people that you can take the worst or one of the worst performing armies mm. and do well with it. Yeah. Because if I can do it, you can do it. I'm not that great at the game. You know, I'm not that. Into, I'm not the most intelligent player. I've been playing for the longest. Like, yeah. if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Is my methodology yeah. right? I mean, I can't even say the names right of Abaddon or Abaddon. So, whatever. You right? said them both right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Maybe I'm good at this game. Who knows? Yeah, very good at it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, if I can do it, you can do it. And I get more compliments about my army lists mm. from players at the tournament. They come around and go, "Oh, Steve, I wanted to see your army." Yeah. Because you know there was a, like a Leicester event I remember last year, and I was like, "What do everyone hate?" Sam Hain shining spears. Like nobody's taking Sam Hain. Sam Han, what is it? Sam Hain. I'd say I'd say Hain. Hain? Yeah. 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 I think so, yeah. Sam Han, Sam Hain. Whatever. Potatoes, potatoes. Sure. <laughs> so um I was like, I'm gonna take that. Yeah. I don't even think this faction's ever been played. And I was like, what else is cool? Well, jet bikes are cool. Well, I'll take every single shining spear I possibly can. I'd like a shining spear army and phoenix lord army, that right? That's amazing. Did you put them all in arrowhead for Of course I did. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't go in any others, no, would they? <laughs> so, um, you know, and I was like, right, I'm going to upgrade everyone. Although I know I'm wasting points, right? I know I'm wasting points. And people come around, oh, Steve, I hope you win this. Oh, that army's amazing, yeah. right? Somebody walks around, they don't go, oh, 30 Desolation Marines. Oh, that army's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. you yeah. don't get that. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, A, I do it because people like my models that I've painted well and it's an army that I think's cool and then even if I get to like the last round of the event and lose, people are like, oh my God, it's amazing yeah. because I did better than they thought I was going to do, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Um, and then also like some of the other podcasts or other gamers, I've heard like the snide little comments yeah. from people, oh, Steve's list, that's rubbish and yeah. stuff. And then you look at the results yeah. and... It's a bit awkward if I perform better than they do with their top tier, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So what does it show? It shows that player skill is better than the army list. Yeah, yeah. The army list is only as good as the pilot. And also, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So I am simply, like, I've tried to put out a bit of a stance, um, and I sent an email out, like, I don't know, I was on a bit of a rant, I think, of an email, and I was like, 
wouldn't it be cool if people just had to commit to three armies for the year? Yeah. For your ITC points. Oh, so right, yeah. by all means, take whatever army you want, but you wouldn't score any tournament. You wouldn't score any, like, let's say you won it. Yeah. You wouldn't get any, like, ITC points for it. It's a kind of, hey, I want to play this army, give it a go. Sure, go and take it. Because the issue is, when we start jumping from army to army and army in the tournament scene, guess what happens? People get their rules wrong. Yeah. Because they haven't put the time in. Like, let's say you've only yeah. ever played um, Eldar, for example. Yeah. You're going to know Eldar inside yeah. out, yeah. right? You're not going to get your rules wrong because you've probably had loads of learning opportunities for you to go, oh, I probably played that a bit wrong. Mm. In my next game, I'll play it how it should be played. Or, yeah. you know, you've got the time with it. You've had the practice games with it. You've looked over that codex so yeah. many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your rules Fully right. Agree. People that jump from army to army get their rules wrong more often yeah. i've seen it happen yeah, yeah, yeah. um and that in itself is blowing up these kind of results of these armies because we also then got people who are not intentionally but they are accidentally what well, i call it like non-adherent to the rules mm. it's not cheating it's non-adherent um they could have prepped a little bit harder they could have mm. got more repetitions in so all of a sudden yeah the yeah i don't know where i was going with this but well it's, it's yeah it's really interesting because the, the the shining spears example yeah is is really fun and cool and like I I go the tournaments I did attend I always like had a theme and we we had conversations with people going no a theme is like you know doing like all assault marines and nothing but assault marines I was like yeah but that's like eighth company that wouldn't actually really be fielded unless in like in dire need so yeah. a real sort of themed force mm. would be like the first company on McCrag fighting against Tyranids or you know the fourth company with Uriel Ventress fighting such and such or whatever that that's that's the theme not just the same unit 14 times or whatever. But then the Shining Spears one is an example where that's a craft world. They're all exarchs. They they would form that. So sometimes some people, I, I, certainly in the past, would not quite understand what it meant by theme. I think you could have like a, a theme based on play style. Yeah. And I would say, I'll be honest, my knowledge of Samhain lore is zero. Well, they're all bikers. Right. So I rem all I, <laughs> pretty much all remember of the old days is like, you know, you'd get the red vipers, you'd get yeah. the red fire prisms, you'd get the red, you know, everything, red falcons, yeah. you'd get the red wind riders and the shining spears. Yeah. Like, it was like a very fast army, right? Yeah. So I put that list together more, I suppose, okay, I maybe accidentally got it right. But you look at the army rules and the army rules should reflect the narrative way to play. Yeah, yeah. The most competitive way to play the game should also be the narrative way to play the yeah. game. So, yeah, the best way to play Samhain is with a very fast mobile army. You look at the data sheet, which one's the fastest, Shining Spears are. Cool, this is probably a good way to play this army then. Yeah. They should marry up together. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think I'm like my knowledge of heresy is way better than 40k. I've mm. read the majority of those army books. But yeah, I think like what you said there, you could have two types of themes, right? Law accurate themed, yeah. or in my instance, like, play style themed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think it is a big, yeah. That's one of the things I've liked looking at 10th is that um, <clears throat> I think Gene Steeler cults have been written really well for 10th because yes. they've been written to fit who they are, how they play, how they look. It's a yeah. really complete yeah. thing. They look and play. And I was saying this the other day, yeah. the, the um, Nexus looking at his map and then in the game has the ability to move Blips. Blips. Yeah. Matches how he looks. It matches the law that he, that this idea that they, they, you know, they're always sneaking their way back in. And I, you know, I'm so far from looking at the armies for 10th, the, the army where I go, they feel like how they look and they feel, they play like how they should. And I think, and yet a little bit, you can't, I would say with Gene Steelers, it's, it's hard to go, well, I'm only doing this army. You do have to play them as a bit of a toolbox. You can't just go, yes. Just loads of them because yeah, it's not yeah, going to work that way. Yeah. But I, I, but I think sometimes you know, especially for me who's a casual player, having your hand held a little bit, we're going. You know, this army sort of it's it's prepackaged to almost be the way it should be. I think I think it's not a bad thing. So I think if you can build army with flavour, yeah, that matches. I think it, it just brings an extra little edge to it. I think. Yeah, my my, my bugbear when it comes to like rule changes and stuff like that, whether that's like a a reaction to tournament and meta and stuff was I built up a Gene Steeler Court Army. I the, I started doing a kill team. When we played some kill team games. It was me and Wade doing a claw and order because he had Arbites and I had um, the Gene Steeler Court 
Claw. Oh, right. Claw and Order. Order. Claw Amazing. Order. Clang, clang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great so name. We're, we're, we're always good with the names, honest. Um, and then I was asked to do an Apocalypse Army with it. So there was nothing in between. There was no 40k collection. It was like... <laughs> 12 figures to God knows how many. 12 figures. So I was like, cool, all right. And it was like workshop, like, you know, we'll, we'll supply like the things you need, but we would well, hope so when acolytes only come in five in a box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, so what, what? So there's a couple of things here. So, first of all, um, all the other people in this tale of four gamers had massive collections or were doing Imperial Knights and they already had like seven painted and were only adding one. I had like 12 figures and they're all rank and file. And it was like, do you know how long this is going to take? So I, I went into my old armies. I got an old Imperial Guard army, snapped mm. off all the heads, put a load of like Gene Sealer Court heads on them. Sat about forty brood infantry. I had like some because at that time as well, you, your brood infantry could have like Lehman Rosses, Chimeras, mm. Sentinels, yeah. and then they did the um, Psychic Awakening, uh, uh, the Greater Good, and they had yeah, loads yeah. of extra stuff in there. So you could take Bane Blades, you could do this, you could do that. I was like, cool. Did all that, built the army around that, just because I had that army already. Did a load of head swaps, started adding some extra Gene Sealer Court. Then they changed the rules in ninth, and I couldn't field my brood infantry as standard. And I was just like, "Could you use them as neophytes, though?" I could have done, yeah. But all the other stuff I painted, I couldn't use. Yeah. So I was like, "That that's my biggest bugbear is when stuff like I I've spent time building up a collection, I painted it, I'm now ready to play a game. I now can't play that game." But I don't know if that's necessarily. But I will ignore it because yeah. I, I don't really care for that. Exactly. Well, yeah. In the new one, it's um, for tenth, you can take. Um, pretty much nearly everything out of the Imperial Guards and it's five or 500 points. I mean, I'm never going to go to a tournament with it. No. And I'm playing against my mates and if they turn around and go, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to get new mates. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly and right. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. Because sometimes a change isn't in made in the game and it's nothing to do with the tournament scene. Mm. It's because it's doesn't come in the box yeah. that you can buy or there's like probably a shipping issue or yeah. like a it's sort of really mundane. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, it's not the tournament scene yeah, yeah. because I don't think anybody thought having a thousand points of Brood Brothers was even any good. Yeah, right. No, back it's, with it's not, no, I assure you. Because, <laughs> and actually, if somebody turned up and went, "Yeah, I've got a full, you know, two thousand point Brood Brother army and a Patriarch," I'm like, "Cool, well, you're not getting any army rules then. Yeah. You're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage." Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should just play guards. Exactly. Yeah. So that's not. I agree with you when when your collection gets like to some extent nullified yeah. that really hurts me as a collector but also it's i think as soon as we create like an echo chamber of any comment mm. whether it's the competitive scene is toxic and it's killing yeah, know, yeah. our mm. army list, yeah. mm. people then just use that then right they just yeah. insert that quote yeah every single yeah, time yeah. for whatever reason yeah yeah you know like we've had it recently with um you know games workshop has said hey some of these forge world units are going to be in deck or like legends yes yeah i was going to ask about that yeah. yeah so i look at that and i go from a gamer i think it's great yeah from a the health of the tournament scene the less data sheets that are out there probably the better yeah, yeah. it's going to mean that there's going to be a fairer balance to the game like we don't want to go back to the days of you had to ask permission to bring a Forge World unit. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? That they were they were days. Have you got your pink slip, your green slip? Have I stamped the have I stamped the blue slip? No, I've not stamped the blue slip. No, you but can't use it. Let's say there's a model that's Legends, right? Yeah. And you've always used him with your mates yeah. for the last fifteen years. Yeah. And and if they go, oh, actually, sorry, officially he's in Legends now. He can't exist. Yeah. Like you said, you're just going to find better friends. Yeah. <laughs> because. <laughs> Yeah, if your friendship is based on gaming and not based on being friends yeah. first yeah. and gaming second, there's problems, isn't there? So, you know. all they've said is, for tournaments, it's going to be easier to not use these models because they're not necessarily as balanced yeah. or we're yeah. not going to update the rules on them, whatever. Cool, so, fine. Yeah. Like, you and your friends can go... Oh, you know, he's in Legends now, but probably should have been put in Primaris yeah. models. Can I have an extra attack in Wound? Cool, pay an extra 10 points. Sounds about fair. I mean, like, come on. Let's yeah. use a bit of common sense, right? I mean, the mm. other thing as well is, like, you can always play older rule systems, right? If you really want to. We said to. this last, like, we said this yeah. the other week, Games Workshop don't come and kick your door yeah. in yeah. if you're playing something the way you want to play. Yeah. It's oh, not so, what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> so my main Nige, he, I've got him into Warcry, and uh, I've got the old... Rule book, he's got the old rule book. So we've been playing the old rules. The new rules are out. There's loads of new rules on top of that. Yeah. Like the reactions, which is really fun. So normally in Warcry, you have two activations. You, you do your stuff. 
Whereas in now, you've got something called a reaction, whereas during your opponent's turn, you can use one of your activations to, to smack them back or you know, pull your shield up a bit more and this, that, and the other. But it uses one of your activations, of your, one of your two. So yeah. when it comes to like, when you actually activate, you can only do a thing now. So that, that's really cool. But Nige hasn't got that. He doesn't have those rules. So we're playing old rules and there's like some old campaigns. There's no way like we're using the app to, to do like the War Scroll Builder, the Varen Spire thing. That, that's updated for the new one. So it was like very complicated. But we've just been playing with the old rules. He's really got into it. But the thing I really like is no one's knocking on our door. We don't really care. We're having fun. He's building his army and painting it or his, his war band. And then what I'm going to do is when he comes around to my next, he's going, right. We're going to use these rules now. These are the extra because you've now understood the basics of that game quite yes. a fair bit. Yeah, I'm just going to chuck a new rule at you, which is called reaction, which you'll be like, "Oh, cool, this is great." So he's just getting into into the game system with the rule book he's been reading and he's got. I'm savvy enough to to this. This is rare for me that I know a game inside out that I can go, "Yeah, I can play that game. It's no problem." And then I can just add the new rules as we yeah. go along. Um, really like the new campaign system as well. So that's definitely something I want to encourage him to to try. So we're trying to do a campaign, but that's fine. You know, no one's. It's not the end of the world. We're not. He's not going to go to a tournament now and go. Oh, I'm playing the old rule yeah. system of mm. War Cry. It's like, oh, cool. I'll just get the new rules and just swat up then, or yeah, or whatever. Exactly. So it's, like it's, it's, it's more than acceptable. <laughs> it's like a friendship should always be based around gaming because I think, like. Your, your moral code to, to your friend should be the thing that layers over the game, not the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. you shouldn't go, well, like, like the new app has come out and you, you're probably aware of this straight away. There's now this, there's a, there's a flaw in the Black Templars loadout and it's got the column Black Templar gun cylinders because they've said, um, in your crusade squad, it says you, one of your crusaders can have, can, uh, rem remove their bolt gun and replace it with a heavy bolt pistol and a, a power fist, okay? So they can take away the bolt gun and they become close combat. And I was putting it into the app and, and it kept coming up with a little warning saying that I got it wrong somewhere. And I was like, no, no, I've took away, I've took away his bolt gun and I've took away his pistol and I've took away his close combat knife because he's got this pistol and he's got this fist. And it kept telling me it was wrong. I was thinking, have I got this wrong? I, I'm sure I haven't. So I went back in and just to see if I don't, I just thought, just this isn't going to be right, but I'll just check it. I gave him his bolt pistol and his close combat weapon back, and it was happy. So there's a Marine with a close combat, who's got a close combat knife. He's got a bolt pistol, he's got a heavy bolt pistol, and he's got a chain fist. Nice. And he goes, <laughs> He's a Swiss <laughs> Army knife, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. He's so got now got a bolt. He's now got a, well, he's, you know, he's a gunslinger because he can now potentially have a bolt, a bolt pistol and a, and a heavy yeah. bolt pistol. He's, yeah. got a a he's got a nail file equipped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got right. a little, those pick. little yeah, pair of scissors to yeah. pick. He's got a what I'm attachment. Getting at, yes. What I'm getting at, a friend wouldn't to a friend going, Well, I think you find a can. Yeah, yeah. A friendship would go, that's daft. Let's ignore yeah. that. Well, yeah. you know, and that. Yeah, and that's why friendship should be the, the highest, the highest part of the mm. game, isn't it? It's like really? when we we're all, you know, like much younger and uh, knocking Thanks. about yeah. with a uh, <laughs> football. You didn't go, oh, sorry. Actually, uh, we do not have the exact goalposts. They're not perfectly painted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they don't have the goal net. No, you went. I'll just chuck my bag down here. You chuck your bag yeah. down over there. Are they your goalposts were probably not even the same distance apart. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. out of jumpers from school. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, by the time you walk to the other end, in one person stride length was a bit longer than the other. All of a sudden, one goal is bigger than the other, and you probably had a slightly deflated balloon. Probably yeah. not quite at the right psi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and also, did anyone do the offside rule during those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you have your All right, right, lads on lunch. Uh, everyone got their shin pads on. Yes. No. I was playing in my Clark's football, sh my Clark's shoes squared off at the front and if you manage to get a toe punt that was anyway so yeah. my point is <laughs> just play yeah right let the rest mm. come if you want to yeah. go to a tournament when I used to you know go and play football at the weekend or whatever yeah you put your shin pads on you put your football boots on you don't argue with the ref you should anyway but <laughs> if it's football you should be and anyway my point is just play the game yeah. and if you go to a tournament okay what are the standards I need to know to be able to play with the same code of conduct as everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I think, yeah. straightforward is that. It's, it's it's really interesting because I did have strong opinions about tournament play. Yeah. Um, and I was always thinking like, you know, there, it's not nice, it's not pleasant, it's all very sort of intense. And if I don't know, it's like dog eat dog, they'll just like jump on you and like rip you apart and then you're destroyed and stuff. 
Um, I've played a lot of Lord of the Rings and a lot of doubles, uh, Warhammer and stuff. And you've always had that other person with you. So you can like, is that right? Is that right? But then we still had the odd, but one, one, one knobhead. We only had one knobhead. When I look yeah. back, it was like, actually, it was only one knobhead. And that's, again, I think a perception that's been blown out. Talking to you, talking to Rob um, and Mikey, I, I feel like I, we should probably do like a tournament thing. Yeah. Like, like a little road yeah. show, like, like whether next year or whatever. Because we did Turnip 28, which was fun. Yeah. And I didn't know the rules for Turnip 28. I I'd tried to swap the night before. I don't know if you're aware of Turnip 28. So as a guy called Max, he gener- made, made some rules. It's all very root vegetable based. But the, <laughs> the idea really, and I, I like it, is you get some like... I think the concept came from some Perry Napoleonics and some Perry Medieval and you just smash them together and you can have like Knights with Muskets or Napoleonic British with a Knight Helmet or something like that and they just stick loads of bits on it to look like they're made out of turnips is this the guy that gave you the advice about Skyrim to be a farmer (laughs) (laughs) different different guy I feel like there's a common theme going on yeah yeah you can only uh, do like vegetables this show is sponsored by farmland (laughs) yeah Yeah. but I didn't know really know the rules and we started playing I played against him to start off with and it was just a really good event really fun there was there was no one really that was like there to take advantage it was just fun wasn't yeah, it, it yeah was really, really good, good yeah. fun and we got uh Sumpcon in uh october which is necromunda again my rules for necromunda are okay but there's like rules like blaze and some other things that just give me anxiety in the willies i'm just like oh, it's really worded in such a way that i know i'm going to get it wrong every time i use it um so, and i keep reading it and it's just like you know when you're reading a sentence and you're like none of that went in i'll read it again no nope, it's not gone in i'll yeah. read it again still not gone in do you know what you could do like a video course, like an academy, where you could study this kind of stuff and be explained it. Because if only we knew, so, if only we knew someone that did that. I oh, know, right? What a what a that's, an, that's a gap in the market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk to us more, then, please, because <laughs> you do that, don't you? Well, like it's funny you mentioned earlier about like, how you're teaching your friend to play. Yeah. So my I've got to start playing 40k course, and obviously it's designed for 10th. Um, and we looked at how's the best way to teach somebody anything? And like my background is mainly in sport. Mm. So if I'm going to teach anybody how to example, kick a football, spike in volleyball, whatever it is, I'm going to go, right. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Then I'm going to break it down whole part whole. So you put small things together. So the first bit of a spoiler here, but when you, the first lesson on our Academy, where we look at the movement phase, you know that command phase thing? We just skip that. Yeah. Who wants to learn about Battleshock in round, you know, it's pointless. Yeah. Because yeah. Battleshock, yes, it happens in the command phase. And technically that happens after you've deployed your armies. Nobody cares when you're learning to play. Yeah, yeah. So lesson one is basically moving your models. And all we get you to do is have a race. So you and your friend that you're learning this game with, or you by yourself, um, We've got a race from one side of the table to the other. That's all we've taught you is the movement phase. Mm. You can't shoot. That yeah. sounds fun. You can't charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no fallback moves. Yeah. There are simply, you can move or advance. Yeah. And you can obviously, we teach you about coherency, moving around terrain, getting in front of other people. So we teach you engagement range. We teach you how to move your models properly and coherency, right? Yeah. And, you know, moving over terrain or whatever. You do that and you're like, Cool. I know how to move my models now. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So then we introduced the shooting phase. And we're like, right, now we're going to play the same game again. And you're either w- rewarded based... And we basically, each phase, layer in yeah. something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether it's, okay, a leader's now going to join the unit. Or you need to... Because we're in the combat phase, we now need to teach you how to fall back mm-hmm. because you would have never been in combat to know how mm. to fall back, right? So over the week, and you get a lesson every day and a new game to play every day... By the end of it, you shouldn't even need to re- pick up the rules. Yeah, that's the that's the whole point. It's is so that there, you've yeah. got all fundamentals. Like yeah. it's in here, right? Yes, yeah. because you played ten games, and then we go right. Well, you take your little forces now, and then you go right. Our next step is, hey, that you see all these cards. Forget about all those. Mm-hmm. Just play this mission and this map. Okay, you played that game. Cool. Well, next, bring in this one. So we just layer it out for you. Um, so it's nice and simple. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really good way of doing you it. You remind me of my friend, friend of mine's a marathon runner. Okay. And um, he always said, um, he said, learn to run far before you learn to run fast. Yeah. And I think that's, and yeah. I think it's a very similar system, isn't it? It's just get it all working and then you can start getting 
slick at it, isn't it? And I think it's very cool. Yeah, I mean, going, going, going back to the um, war crime analogy, there's there's a lot of rules. I, d I don't use a rule book. The only time I use a rule book, because it's a rule I've not used very... Depends on the game you play. Infrequent, but, yeah. Yeah, so like climbing. A lot of games, I don't have much climbing. So yeah. it's very rare that I do any climbing. Except that one day, you got like some ladders and a sort of a platform. You're like, check climbing. Oh, it's, it's what I thought it was, but I yeah. thought I'd just have a quick check. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's, that's, that makes a lot of sense, just chucking in a little bit at a time. But it's also really like... Um, yeah, so with this course that we're doing at the moment, we thought, okay, well, it's the start of um, 10th edition. We did a pre-order and we were really grateful for anybody that jumped on the pre-order because it helps us as a business stay afloat because mm. I couldn't release any academy courses um, and I couldn't release any courses because I knew 10th edition was coming out and I didn't want anyone to be partway through a course and the edition drop. Yeah, yeah. So we took a bit of time off from actually selling any programs so that we could just wait for 10th edition. So anyway... Um, it's a bit of a thank you to everyone that helped us with the pre-order. Yeah. We said, right, we'll do a pop-up Facebook group. So we're going live every day in our Facebook group to answer questions, right? And a lot of people's questions can often be, oh, but what's the best character to take? It's irrelevant if you don't know how to move your models. If you do not know the fundamentals of the game, threat ranges, how to actually move around the yeah. table properly, how to line up a charge, regardless of whether you think you've got the best combo wombo, doesn't matter. Because fundamentals win throughout. And when you've got the fundamentals of that mastery, then actually when you pick up the Gene Steeler Cult Index, you look yeah. at that and you go, I'm excited to play this army because you can see that this particular army is going to suit you in the way that you mm. like to play. What you're not doing is going, this is the best army list and I need to play it like yeah. XYZ in, until it gets nerfed or then move on to the next one. What do you learn about the game? Nothing. What do you learn about your own skills? Nothing. But the well, player, you're playing somebody else's game, aren't you? Exactly. But I actually think to go back to your point you made earlier, uh, the Gene Sealer Cult, in my opinion, is one of the best indexes for tenth edition. For me, it's the most exciting. It's why I'm taking that to the, my next tournaments. Mm, great stuff. And I don't really like the the model range doesn't sit like shine for me. Yeah. Um, some of the models, I don't. So is a. I don't mind the aberrants because they're jacked. I'm like, yeah. He's <laughs> uh, but it's quite a repetitive range. Like, yeah. It's not massively varied, but... I don't really like the three arms, if I'm being honest. Some of the heads... look four arms, that's what you want. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What's the you point? want to evolve quicker. Yeah. So, anyway, it's one of those that I'm like... But the Lovely vehicles, though. But the play style really appeals yeah. to me. Grey Knights are the same. Yeah. Grey Knights in 10th edition. Oh, that, rule, that index, the way it's all put together... Chaos Space Marines, for me, they're th Drakari. They look like they've got an exciting game yeah, experience. Yeah. So I think between those, they look really good. Sisters of Battle as well, I'd put in there. Good play styles, yeah. good armies, not overly like tuned rules. Um, you're going to have fun them. games with them. So um, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got a Sisters on me, so I need to have a bit of a peruse of those as well. Mm. Sisters, Gene Slickle, Imperial Guard. I tend to go for like the, the really weak flesh bags yeah that can be easily killed I, I, and that's the thing i've always done for my army builds is like it's it's not again about the plane it's it's like oh i feel like the human that will be <laughs> in that universe i want to be like yeah having that collection I, that's why i've always enjoyed well, playing you, with imperial guard I think. yeah you always like whether it's you like playing the villain or like i think when i read about the horus heresy if there's one person in the entire like i'm probably most known for playing blood angels mm. But if there's one character I can probably align myself most closely to, obviously, apart from being Bard, the next one <laughs> after that would be Sigismund. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, me and Sigismund, we got a lot in common, I feel. Like, Black, so me and Black Templars have got this bond now. I'm <laughs> like, so I could play Black Templars. Nice. Do you know, because yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. Re there's something about it, like these knights in space. And yeah. I'm like, that, it's, yeah. That, that, for me, is the feel that Marines should be, is knights in space and just different orders of knights. I mean, they're kind of, that's how they're pitched to a certain degree. But yeah. I think Black Templars lean into that yeah. a lot more. Yeah. Well, they, the, the models, especially, and, and thankfully with the Primaris models, really lean into the gothicness of yeah. Yeah. 40k. To the, like the sisters do, I think, you know, there's two ranges that really show gothic imperiums. And also yes. with the Black Templars, you can get this guy with four pistols. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> with a knife in his teeth. <laughs> I don't know. If I was to redo like the Black Templars, I'd do them as a, I know it sounds bizarre. It's like, you know, if I was to go back over history, I'd make Black Templars one of the founding 
because um, they're so chapters. It's weird, isn't it, to think that they are they have the pull that they do and are actually a second founding chapter. And, it's, it's, and I might even do it, but it feels like they should have their their second founding should be like you got the Knights of St John, then you got the the Red Cross, oh, then you got the Knights of Mold, Malta, so do, you yeah, got the Knights of yeah. Orders, that's mm. cool. So you follow the colours of like because yeah. they are the Knights of St John. And the really. thing is, is that you know if you look at the decal sheet, it leans into that because there's uh, there's lots of little different campaign badges and little shields, oh, so mm. you could. You could go all of this gang are all just yeah. this order and all of that gang of that order. Is this happening on a round table? <laughs> <laughs> it's happening right now. We should all take an order each. Shotgun dance a lot. Yeah. And the thing is as well, and they all wear a ta- yeah. they all wear a tabard, so you can paint each tabard to go with each bit. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, they're a they're a nice yeah. army. Quarter black tabards, you know, like <laughs> we're bringing Bretonians back. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm all in for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds fun. So you've yeah. touched on like keeping fitness, uh, keeping fit, fitness. keeping fitness, yeah, keeping fitness, keeping <laughs> fitness. Words yeah. just failed as they were in my head, and they Where'd came out it? jumbled. <laughs> <laughs> so that that um, like physical fitness was like something you did before wargaming, then, or at least um, as a profession. Yeah, talk a bit more about that. Then, yeah. Okay, so um, how did this happen? So going right the way back, um, I was probably I left primary school probably a little bit uh, tubbier than I would have maybe liked. Mm. And felt quite self-conscious about it. So what I did was, um, basically, this also coincided with playing Warhammer. And I was, I hated school. Like, mm. I didn't want to go. Um, and it's actually really, this is one of those things I was telling you about with the Comic-Con thing. I really kind of got back to why did I behave in a certain way? Anyway, I didn't want to go to school. And I probably created my mum a lot of stress and heartache. But basically, I... I think I got so anxious about going to school, I ended up with like a stomachache. Mm. And my mum was probably so worried about what was actually wrong with me. And probably nothing really was. If I look back, I just didn't like school. And then I found like a local gaming club, loved it, met some people from my gaming club that went to my school. We shared a French class and a graphic, you know, we ended up becoming really good friends. So I started getting lean because my mum used to give me pocket money every day for lunch. I did not use that money for lunch. I used that for models oh, at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on quite an intense diet over yeah. the course of being at school, lost quite a lot of weight, and then all of a sudden found myself playing um, volleyball. Volleyball was my main sport, weirdly. It was like an option to do as an after-school club, thought I'd give it a go. And, you know, as you probably ima- I was given like called a lot of names for playing volleyball mm. and the rest of it by all the lads that were playing rugby or football. But volleyball, you know, I've got two left feet, so playing football was never very good for me, and I wasn't really built to play rugby, so... I was like, give us a go. Really enjoyed it. Got on really, really well. Ended up playing for my national, you know, the national team when I was younger. Wow. Um, I fell in love with coaching. Um, and then when I moved schools, um, there, I moved schools to do PE at A level. I went. I moved schools because I didn't really like mine. They didn't really offer the courses that I wanted to. So I thought, you know, fresh start. It's actually local to my local club. So I there was an hour bus wait between me finishing school and me getting home. Uh, okay. And um, I wasn't very liked at this new school by a certain group of people because I'd come in, new guy, mm. right? Attractive. I, I was in good... Fit. Well, I was, in, I was physically fit. Attractive is maybe, <laughs> a pin, you know, someone's opinion. And um, anyway, so, you know, I, was, I suppose I was quite popular quite yeah. early on. But the older lads who had left the school in their cars didn't yeah. really like me so much. So they used to wait outside school for me every day. Mm. Um, you know, I was punched in the face a few times, you know, just kind of overall not a great experience. Mm. So what I decided to do was just join every single after school club for that hour yeah. until I then ran to my bus. And basically they would wait outside school for me one day in screen masks. That's what they used to do. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're into cosplay. No. <laughs> <laughs> If they would have been, I'd have been like, we probably could have something in common, but yeah. you know, I don't it's think like they, they were in cosplay. they literally got nothing better to do than harass one guy. No, they literally don't, yeah. They were there to pick up their girlfriends that were also, they could turn up in their cars, but dating girls that are younger in the school. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit, yeah. anyway. A bit weird, yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> so. They're all in prison now. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So the, uh, yeah, I learned to enjoy fitness. Hmm. You know, and I then fell in love with coaching, helping other people. So I went on loads of little coaching qualifications. My school um, were basically said to me, look, if you want, we can create a job for you to be a PE assistant. 
Uh, so you can, you know, be a coach. Uh, you can assist a teacher in teaching. And then in volleyball, all the, all the qualifications I'd built up, I could then take that PE lesson myself. Mm. I like volleyball, whatever, because I was, you know, qualified enough is like essentially a contractor. Um, and then from that point on, I went to university, studied sport performance, uh, did that at Bath, and then was given like a kind of a, essentially a, not a scholarship, they didn't pay for me, but they allowed me to get in on lower grades mm. than everyone else because yeah. of the, like the sport aspect. So I played good level volleyball. Um, I was training with the, like the GB national team for volleyball, uh, fell in love with training because I'm quite short for a volleyball player. Mm. All my teammates were six foot 10. I'm five foot ten, so how do you make up that extra foot? Well, you just got to jump a bit yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. only way I could jump higher was squat. So yeah. I was in the gym squatting horrendous amounts, and then I just fell in love more with the gym than I did actually playing volleyball. Mm. Um, went on to do some other teaching qualifications, and then throughout this whole time, these like modelling opportunities were asked if I wanted to do it. So I was on the catwalk at quite a young age. And then it was, oh, do you want to model for Abercrombie and Fitch? When I went to, I was in like New York store on a school trip. They were like, oh, would you like to wow. m model for us? That is wild. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Um, how, you know, so I think there was a lot of influence mm. there. And there was like charity catwalk shows I was invited to do. I did those. And then there was a competition where you could enter to become Mr. Great Britain. And I thought, I'll give it a go. So I won that nice. in 2012. Mr. Great Britain. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that is the clickbait title. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Great, Mr. What does Mr. Great Britain think about what? tournaments? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was like the start, I think, of then me becoming into underwear modelling yeah. and fitness modelling. Um, and yeah, I mean, I had quite a, you know, I, I suppose I'd modelled for some pretty decent yeah. big companies. Yeah. Um, you know, like, you know, on the underwear boxes, some of those are I'll me. Warn you, you're, probably you're, your face on my, your, not not my face. <laughs> you wouldn't have got my face on there. They don't care about the face. It's, it's just, just, yeah. just like it's the torso. Chest, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> funny story there. Complete tangent. But so I did it for Next. You know Next. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Yeah. You know, just common brand. They were like, yeah, we're not actually sure we can use you. And I was like, what? They were like, yeah, you're too lean for our demographic. <laughs> not that bothered. So I went, give me a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I just ate food and I was like do I need to get a tan or anything no 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 we want you really washed out <laughs> yeah sounds like me <laughs> so so I get these pictures and like there's this picture of me on the box right and everyone's like yeah, but Steve you look you look way better than that and I was like well thanks but they it needs to be fit for purpose right yeah yeah, yeah. so um, anyway yeah so that was a I mean respect story. because that that I mean, I struggle to lose weight. Okay. Um, that, that's just because I'm lazy. Right. It's got nothing to do with anything else. It's just because just I'm lazy. My wife is like proper, like, she's always running. She's always doing like hit classes and stuff. Yeah. I'm just lazy. Um, well, I think I know why you're about there. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and eat in there, yeah. Six podcasts Doesn't a week. Doesn't Gosh, we'll just do another podcast. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think we'll just get the biscuits open, yeah. yeah. He knows my trip tonight. Um, but yeah, because uh, I see like, it, well, you hear a lot, a lot of actors do that. They they, they put on weight for a video mm. and then just oh, immediately lose. Christian Bale but, is insane. Well, it's just it, the yeah. discipline that you, you have. And I, I guess there is like a, a certain... Because my wife definitely has the discipline. I used to have it. And I think I just need to relearn. That. Yeah. I've just I've just lost it. Because during lockdown, I was doing a fair bit of running to try and lose weight. And then just things happen. And yeah. You kind of just go, oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I've got that to paint. I'll, yeah. I'll run tomorrow. You've got tomorrow. no accountability. Yeah. And there's no purpose as well. Yeah. There's no like actionable reason to. So, yeah, that's probably why. Yeah. Just, just lazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> pure and simple. Well, you I have think, to have a goal. I think that helps. Right? It's... Maybe just run away from the the wife. Maybe that 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 is the goal. I like <laughs> just that, don't catch me. That that classic Reebok advert from the early noughties. It was like belly's gonna get you, and it was like a massive inflatable belly. Like, and someone was just running away yeah, from it. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Advert. But yeah, I think that was like the original. Um, I mean, so after the Mr. Great Britain thing, and I then thought, well. I get all these people asking me questions about how to lose weight. Mm. So I studied on loads of extra nutrition courses. I had an online practice for helping people. I worked with, I've worked with celebrities. I've worked with actors. I've worked with musicians. And then I've worked with people that just want to, you know, 
look good so they can feel like they can leave the lights on in certain situations, you know, and it can simply be that reason <laughs> yeah. or yeah. they've just become recently single and yeah. actually maybe, yeah. you know, shredding a few pounds would help them have a bit more confidence yeah. going yeah. up to somebody. Or maybe they're, they don't like when they go to try clothes on, mm. it doesn't fit and feel how they want it. Yeah. Yeah. So whether they were, you know, like a actor or whatever in, it doesn't matter or whether they were competing for a bodybuilding show. And then I just fell in love then with the training and I just kind of took that. How far can I take it? So I started competing in bodybuilding. Um, I competed globally, internationally with that. Um, won some pretty big events. I, I always competed in fitness modeling, which is like yeah. a, and I did classic bodybuilding. So you like, you keep your shorts on in fitness, right? You don't have to wear the G string. Well, fitness modeling is swim trunks. Yes. F men's physique is what you're thinking about ah, with the board shorts, of course, okay? Yeah, yeah. But I did classic bodybuilding. Yeah. So classic bodybuilding. I funny enough, when I put a pair of board shorts on, my physique looks terrible. I don't have the right proportions for it. Oh, so it's either swim trunks yeah. or thong. Yeah. Because the way my body works, it just looks better in a thong. Anyway, <laughs> weirdly nice. enough, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my sentence never been said. Yeah, to me once. <laughs> you look better in a thong. You look better in a thong. Yeah, and it is. Anyway, I'll go to details, but bin I won't. Bag has been said. Yeah. Not thong. <laughs> I think it was dwarf throng. Yeah, <laughs> dwarf throng. Dwarf throng. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was so kind of having that um, discipline, dedication mm. to that. Yeah, and then when I I ended up getting back into because I didn't play Warhammer over this time. Um, I was in a really toxic relationship and I was like, I need to, this person as well was, I got working for my company, big mistake. And I felt really trapped because I mm. felt, I didn't want to just say, look, this is over because I didn't want their livelihood to be yes. impacted or they feel like they had to leave or whatever. Anyway, we came to like a, a, like a, a point where I was like, I need to do something else because mm. I actually hated going to the gym. What had ended up happening to me is like this whole hobby and everything I loved was being sucked out of me mm. to the point where I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to talk about it. I was just like, I ended up with real anxiety about it and just, it was awful. So I found myself going back to looking online for models and stuff. And I think there was probably like a point where I always knew there was a safe place for me here. Mm. And whether I just naturally took that same path like I did when I was younger, mm. I started, you know, I thought, oh, they're not going to follow me here. So I started to go to a local club, got back playing, and then I was like, I want to start playing in tournaments. And I was met with this whole negative vibe about going to tournaments. And yeah. I've just had like 15 years of being at the most peak level of competition in another field. And I was like, oh, that's ridiculous that we think it can't be that bad, surely. Mm. And I did go to a few events and I had a very unpleasant experience. More often at Warhammer World events and often at other ones. Mm. Right. There seems to be like a, and I would say this is very typical of the competitive scene. The guys at the top, there's like a good top cohort that will help you no matter what. Mm. Yeah. They're, they understand the rules. They want to win because... They want to, I think, like myself, let the best general be the victor, right? Win or lose, right? And the people at the bottom of the tournament who just go with their, you know, I want to go and use this today, mm. they don't care about win or lose. And so you'll have a great game too. Mm. It's the people that want to go back to their local club. Oh, yeah, I took names in, you know, the people that yeah. are probably um, at a point where they're probably doing better than they thought they would. And they're yeah. thinking how far they can push it. And I think that brings out the worst in people. Yeah, yeah. And it is a very small minority um, of the gaming industry that can get a bit toxic or a bit cheaty or whatever. I mean, I've had... I don't know how many games of 40k I've played a lot now in the last sort of five, four or five years. And I think there's been four instances in particular where I've had to consistently get maybe five out of maybe... 400 games yeah and i am playing on some of the you know top tables now and you know from time to time you'll meet these individuals and yeah you are really reliant on the support of the referee yeah you know and that's kind of what we tried to do with, with the dice breakers interview um, yeah was i really just tried to take myself out of this environment let the referee decide and their their decision is final well that's what i've always been told yeah. even if you disagree with it their decision's final you go with it yeah you yeah just move on and that's how this is going to be played 
Um, but yeah, the fitness side of things is for me always been something that I've always done. Yeah. And with the, I suppose, recent like lockdown hit me so hard, like mentally. Yeah. I completely lost my identity. I lost around 10 kilos of muscle during lockdown. Wow. And for me, that was really hard because I've been so used to looking a certain way where I could get a call from my agent and been like, Steve, can you be on the front of men's health tomorrow? Yes, I'm in that. I'm ready. Like yeah. I was at that yeah. condition all of the time. You know, when you've got an agency, they're not the most, um, you know, they don't give you weeks notice. Yeah. No, I've heard it's, it's all quite short notice. It's yeah. tomorrow. It's the day after. Uh, Steve, you've been requested to be here or do that. Can you be there? Yeah, I can. Cool. Yeah. You need to go. Um, I was also a butler in the buff for quite some time. So every single Friday night I had to go in a, do a butler in the buff job. Right. So I was like, my, my girlfriend's going to love this podcast. <laughs> Should we do butler stories? Yeah. yeah. That'd be, that would be an interview. I tell you. Anyway, so, the butler. Yeah. So I did like a hundred odd butler jobs. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anyway. Um, so, you know, I liked where you then slightly looked into the distance and half smiled to yourself. Yeah. It's all the whole yeah. loads of whole load to drag from that though. just just by that that expression <laughs> Still, what was it uh, stories of a, a butler in the bath yeah that would yeah, be a good that, one that would That'd be, be on our other show which is called Sidetracked After Dark yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you know that's a book right there yeah. yeah yeah. so I had like this um, like this identity and when you lose 10 kilos of muscle and you've worked your entire life for it that's gutting mm, yeah I mean I've been through some pretty bad times with my business and I would say um, and like I said, that relationship went really badly. I think probably the thing that maybe hit the, me the hardest, like money, you can make more money. Like I think with, with my fitness business, there was a time, um, I lost around 20 to 30,000 pounds. I tried to bring out an app and I got really, I kind of, I was working with my best friends, let them, we didn't have the paperwork in place. Yeah. I needed to protect the company. I mm. thought, oh, we're all friends. This will be fine. Yeah. Turns out it's not fine. Yeah. And I had so much resentment for it. I didn't even want to bring the app out. Although I'd paid for the development, we yeah, paid for all the yeah. filming. So I lost a lot of money then. Moved back in with my parents. Luckily, they uh, that helped me break out of the relationship I was in. You know, in when you're betrayed and you're slandered and yeah. blackmailed and all the rest of it, it's pretty bad. But... For all that, I had war gaming. That's when I actually started Vanguard Tactics. It gave me an opportunity to go. Yeah. They've these people have been telling me how bad I am at my job, how that I'm terrible at you know like marketing the business. They've got this new YouTube channel and it's really cool and good. Um, and at Comic Con, I was like, I told this story and I was just I said I probably shouldn't really admit this. It's not something I'm proud of, but I'll tell you. I started my YouTube channel just to prove a point. Yeah. To prove a point yeah. to them, because I'm not a, I'm just a doer. Like I work hard. Like that is what my work ethic is yeah. what I do. And I was like, all right, I'll just show you. I won't say anything. I'll show you. And anyway, in the first, after the first video, in the first month, I had more subscribers than they had in a year. Yeah. Smashing. I suppose as well, it's proving a point to yourself. That's exactly it. Yeah. I yeah. proved a point to myself that with the right work ethic mm -hmm. and the right mentality, you can achieve anything. Yeah. If I can go from being a fitness consultant where I move into a brand new industry where nobody knows me and I start this thing where I was told, and I still see it now, oh, paying for coaching of Warhammer. You must be an idiot to get to have to pay for coaching in Warhammer. Or what competitions have you won? Nobody goes up to Sir Alex Ferguson and goes, sorry, mate, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, did you play for the national team? How many yeah. goals did you score yeah. in, you know, the season of... Nobody cares. Yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson is one of the best managers yeah. Yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm, even if you know even if he plays football. I don't know. But I mean, yeah. I, I'm not a football-y kind of guy. I've had many conversations about that. Yeah. Or, or to respect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because I know nothing about football, but I know since Fergie left Man United, they've never done as well. Is yeah. that correct? But like, yeah. let's say, who, let's say Christian well, Ronaldo. Mourinho was a big example of it, wasn't he? Mourinho has led so many teams to to do extraordinarily well in football and started out as, in life as a translator for British managers going to foreign clubs. Yeah. yeah. And was just around football and having yeah. to translate tactics from an English manager to, to oh, foreign players. Fascinating. That it just he just took a ball and then and then learned yep. how to how it was done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never kicked a ball on the pitch professionally. Well, they, they say that. I mean, that's like something I learned early days when I was a manager. The 
the best coaches for boxing or tennis don't have to be the best players. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. to just yeah. get the best out of the other person. It's it, the same for a manager. You don't have to be really good at like painting miniatures, but if you can get the most out of other people that paint miniatures, that that's that's the goal, right? Yeah. It same very true for bodybuilding, right? Some of the best bodybuilders in the world will be the worst coaches mm. because they have the best genetics. Mm. When you've got the best genetics, you do not need to work that hard, mm. right? You do not need to find all the workarounds. Like when you've got some of the worst genetics, you have to go above and beyond to mm. go, right, how do I maximize muscle? How do I perfect this exercise? Because my biceps aren't growing, right? Well, what's the problem? Well, I need to tweak the exercise like this. So the best coaches are often people that have fantastic ability to take a complex situation and make it simple. Mm-hmm. And also be able to work the problem. Yeah. And those two skills in the cell, you know, bringing those together will help you be- become an awesome coach if you then can communicate well. Mm-hmm. But just because you can play 40K really well mm. doesn't mean that you've got those essential skills that are required. So when I came into, you know, creating Vanguard Tactics, everyone was like, oh, but what competitions you won? And I think you get a certain people that l- who are intelligent enough to look beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, Mm. And now I've got a company business where I don't need to win games. You've, you've got testimonials yeah. where the proof's in the pudding, where you've yeah. got fantastic feedback and things. And yeah, so it just came to a point where my fitness business was, I was doing okay. I still get people now come to me and they go, oh, Steve, you still coach here and I'd love to still work with you. So I've still got a reputation there, but I love this so much more. Yeah, And yeah. the like at Comic Con, my opening line was, "Hi, my name's Stephen Box. I've lost thirty thousand pounds. I've been depressed. I've had anxiety. I've been betrayed, and all those things were the best ever thing that happened to me. Let me tell you why." Yeah, and then sort of unraveled my story. Yeah, uh, but yeah, losing that ten kilos of muscle and completely losing my identity of who I thought I was was tough over lockdown, and yeah. it's been hard ever since to rebuild that muscle back. And even now, like the other day, I um, I went to the gym and I thought, I haven't really been going enough. A bit like what you said, right? You just feel like you're inconsistent. I went in the gym the other day and, because we've had 10th editions dropped, we've had to refilm all our courses, the mm. you know marketing for all those. We've done loads of free content, learn to play, battle reports, you name it. Um, I tried to get in the gym and I took my shirt off and I was like, you need to do something about this. And not that I am unfit or unhealthy, but then I was having this conversation with some of my friends and I was like, I don't want to sound, um, what's the word like? I don't know, but I know I'm not in bad shape. I'm just not in the shape that I want to be. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it's different. Yeah. yeah. And I want to get back to how I want to feel. Yeah which is because it's a significant difference of how I used to feel. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I think, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like it's all personal to you. Yeah. Like I might look at you and go, what? You don't need to be in better shape. Look at me. Yeah. Um, but that's, irre- personal, that's yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. can only set yourself by your own standards. Yeah. And as soon as you set yourself by the people's standards, you're always going to fail, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, and, I, and that's just regardless of whatever yeah. industry you're in. Yeah. Always set your own standards and live by those. But, um, well, they yeah. always say compete with yourself, not someone else. Yeah. Yeah. In, in bodybuilding, to some extent, is, although we joke about being in a thong or whatever, is, I would say, the truest form of that. Because you do not know who else is going to turn up on mm. that day. You cannot influence mm. how they're going to pose next to you. Like, it's not like we're interacting with a ball or I can tackle you mm. and we've got a certain amount of time. And if yeah. I hold the ball for longer and I pass it to my friend, yeah, I have all I've got is the time available between now and the next time I compete. And the thing that's going to set me apart from you is how many hours I spend in the gym, what my diet's like at home, how many meals I prep for myself, how many calories I count, how many times I weigh myself. That's what matters. That person might not even turn up again. Mm. And the only person I can compete against is myself. Can I personally improve on my last performance? Mm. Yeah. And when you have that mindset and you apply that to absolutely everything, I think you can really start to shape whatever it is you want to be better, mm. but you have to have that yeah. you versus you attitude. Yeah. Yeah. No. Amazing. Should we do some Patreon questions? We well, have first s- of all, we want to celebrate uh, Vanguard Tactics hitting 40k subscribers. I know. Yeah. 40k yeah. for 40k. How good yeah. is that? So if anyone's watching, Perfectly timed. don't subscribe. Um, yeah. <laughs> Please subscribe. Too late now. It's already gone past it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Somebody messaged me though. 
and they were like, I'm your 40th thousand subscriber. Amazing. And they messaged me on Instagram. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. I have that's it. Cool, I have it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. No, yeah. Congrats. Sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. No. Especially for 10th. It just, yeah. just hit the right time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Yeah. So we, we put the call out to some of our patrons. Um, to ask you some questions um, and uh, they, were like, sh- they were like who? Yeah. <laughs> oh they were no they, they, they no, were no, no. I mean they're all, they're all our, our, our patrons are a lovely community and they, they know so much and they're always they like are correcting us and helping us out yeah <laughs> they're a very knowledgeable really gang so I'm sure you, being nice. yeah and like first one I'm sure you'll know what this means Sean says question why is Jake so handsome? okay why is Jake so handsome? I don't know who Jake is so oh, but Jake, I apologise Jake is my co-host right? yeah and uh there was, for a time, a period when I would get brought onto a show. And I think it was like, I think I was interviewed by Scary, And it was like, oh, we've got the most handsome man in 40k now. To about to, they, that's what they introduced me as. Mm. And Jake was like, no, I'm the most handsome man in 40k. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, Jake, you are handsome. And then, and then it was just like this running joke. And ever since now, Jake is the factual most handsome man of 40k okay it cannot yeah. be any different okay and if i'm second most handsome i'm fine with that but mm. jake is the most handsome yeah so that's yeah. how it happened yeah it was great when i um uh came in came into games workshop like on my first day there was another chap called uh patrick um and it was like oh there's 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 two patricks how do we differentiate the two and patrick price was called handsome patrick and I was just called Patrick. <laughs> uh, behind closed doors, you were Patrice. Oh, <laughs> Patrice! Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's my uh, come along, Patrice. My my uh, European alter ego. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, Jake is the. That's pure. Is it affirmation? Mm. You're like, I am handsome. Now we are handsome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not taken the uh, people of Lake Town to safety, though. Has he's he? not. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, see, I assume this relates to uh, playing Warhammer, but also it might not. Um, how do you stay so calm and collected when someone is being so aggressive towards you? Okay. Calm. Yeah. So I. I've had a few instances actually where I've had people maybe like right up here in my face. Not always the Warhammer, by the way. Yeah. Normally, you know, whatever, of the life stuff. And I'm always like, how do I want to look back on my behavior? Mm. How do I want to feel about that interaction? Mm. So normally it's a case of I could throw you across the room. I know I'm quite capable of that. Mm. Do I want to look back and go, yeah, Steve, you know, mm. did... Th- no, I don't want to do that. So how do I want to look back and go, right, this is the way that I would, A, want to be seen to be doing this, but for myself, you know. And um, I'm also really sarcastic as well. <laughs> really, does that help? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does, actually. Yeah, so well, like, it normally goes one way or the other, sarcasm. <laughs> like, yeah. Puts the fire out or makes it get a little bit hotter. Yeah. So it was like, um, I think I had an instance at the Bay Area Open, right, last year. I was played it, I was like final day, um, and I was doing really well at this tournament. Um, I took Blood Angels, and I took like Assault Centurions, and everyone yeah. was like, what? They were like, so it was just at the point where Tyranids had just dropped. Tyranids? Tyranids? I the don't know. It's called Tyran, but they are known as Tyranids. But tar- Tyranids works because the planet's Tyran. That's where they're first discovered. Oh. Yeah, with the first. So, like you. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, tell me I'm right all the time. So, <laughs> he's, so, he's such a high enabler. It's, it's, it's high gothic or low gothic. Do you know matter. what? I'm, what I'm going to do now <laughs> is every time some little troll goes on there, that's not how you pronounce that. I'm going to tag you in. I'm like, well, actually. <laughs> mm. Well, I, I, I often get the, uh, the drill the barrels. Like, oh, you've not drilled the barrels. It's like, I paid for that plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I do for photos? Photoshopping. I get a marker pen. <laughs> <laughs> or I have photoshopped holes on before. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. Don't yeah. tell anyone. Sorry, all, this is never going to see the light of day. No it is, so it's fine. <laughs> all for the thumbnails, right? Anyway, people will be like, is he. What? Is he. Fo- you know, might need to close the door. Clue you close like, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, what was I saying? The. Um, how do I stay calm and collected, right? I think, yeah, number one, how do I want to be 
look back on my behavior yeah and like with that BAO situation, I had this guy like, I was taking Blood Angels. Like it's, my list was pretty, arguably at the time, bad. Heat of Tyranid release. Mm. They were, they were the, very good. They, they were the bee's knees, yeah. right? So I'm undefeated at this point, And I was the only undefeated player by the end of day two. But because there wasn't quite enough people to need a top round mm. and they had the haul and they wanted to make sure more stream can- content, they were like, let's just do another day of, we'll do a top eight anyway first round of this game and I go first with my blood angels move my death company over and I kill a maliceptor you know which, which spam out all the mortal wounds and he went this is effing ridiculous that should have never have happened this is absolutely crazy and I was thinking well you didn't screen out my unit like I'm playing blood angels mate this codex is two years old if you didn't see this coming like what Yeah, I've got one stratagem which is any good and it's this one like I told him about it hmm really lost his temper and throughout the whole game he ended up rage quitting at the end right oh nice like he was like I didn't enjoy playing you I enjoy playing your friend though but not you <laughs> oh that hurts and I was like <laughs> and I just went I'm yeah just and he's more handsome <laughs> I, I'm just gonna let you know you said the F word seven times round one and it was like mm. and I was like yeah that's the type of game we had and uh, I told my girlfriend about it and she was like yeah, and I bet you were really, really... Uh, she she put it into perspective. She knew exactly how I'd behave. She was just like, and I bet you were like really like just straight, cynical and a bit sarcastic. Yeah. I was like, yeah. When I'm being overly polite, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I'm keeping my rage at bay, basically. <laughs> so, uh... We'll yeah. keep an eye out for that. You do, yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> is it killing them with kindness? Yeah, That's my, yeah. my favourite one of them. When I used to do, uh, when I used to do the doors, and you'd tell, you'd stop someone from coming in for whatever reason, and they always got the same threat, which was. I'm going to wait for you after work. And I always gave, gave the same answer, which was go, oh, that's very kind of you because I don't like walking home on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then generally because they then got, because they then got laughed at by their mates. It takes them out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. No, yeah. They just yeah. leave. They leave out of embarrassment more than nothing. You yeah. know, see, see, in my head, I'd have also been thinking, oh, that's funny, because your girlfriend wanted to say the same thing to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know that's if it's good, got, got good, quite uh, the same if one. Only was still in the, if only yeah. I was still in that trade, I'd have, yeah. I'd have kept that one. Yeah. 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 There, yeah. There's been a few YouTube comments now and again, and I'm like, I just have to send it to my mate, like, this is what I want to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do that. It's like sometimes it's like a coping mechanism. But you start like going, oh, I'm not having that. You start telling me like, nah, I delete that. And then yeah. usually I, I forget it after like a yeah, hours yeah, because it's not yeah. important. There's like a couple of like over the last couple of days with the with the Warcry video that were just a bit sort of like, you're wrong. It's an awful game. I'm like, well, it's an opinion. I mean, mine's just yeah. an opinion. It's not really. And yeah. you're a, and you're a sellout. I, I'm a sellout as well. Yeah. Apparently, a sellout. GW sellout. You are because I, I like Warcry. Yeah, but I also well. like chosen men from Osprey. I also like black powder from warlord games you know not a gw seller just just like Bourbons certain games from Aldi. <laughs> i like i do like bourbons from Aldi, less yeah. so from lidl probably all from the same place you are fair. such a sellout yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes i am yeah. <laughs> you german supermarket chain sellout you yeah yeah, yeah. filthy <laughs> animal yeah yeah oh crikey right then um, you're not doing very well at getting through these questions i'll be quicker i promise <laughs> no it's fine this one should be Maybe pretty sex tape mm. <laughs> <laughs> this i was gonna say this one should be quite quick uh if you are completely new to warhammer what is the best way of learning to play do you want to my courses yeah boom, boom. boom. nice yeah uh, what if we start competitive play but lose every game? What is the right mindset to make us enjoy it and keep going? Andrew Gibson, Andrew Gibson. Yes. Can you repeat that question, please? Yeah. Uh, so he says, uh, what if we start competitive play, yeah. going to tournaments, etc., but uh, they lose every game? What's the right mindset to have to to sort of go to an in- go to a tournament, enjoy it, but do badly? I guess. Or- so let's use a completely different example, right? I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. It's fine. <gasps> I'm all good for that. In six weeks' time, we're going to put you on a bodybuilding stage. Okay. Okay. Are you expecting to win it? No. No, cool. There we have it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Not, not a chance, but I'll do my best. It, yeah. Exactly, yeah. right? The fact that you are able, or, okay, I want to run the la- London Marathon. I should come dead last. Mm. It's my first ever time doing a marathon. I've never even trained for it, right? So if you are going to a tournament... 
expect to lose mm. because yeah. you are this is one of the things that I find really funny. Like I've had inquiries from people before for bodybuilding competitions and they're like, yeah, I've spoke to a coach. They should say if I work with them that I can get a top three placing. And I was like, that is just arrogance. Mm. You should expect to come last because you have not posed as long as all those other people posing. You have not dieted for as long as everybody else. You have not trained up over the years that it takes to build muscle. You have not put the work in. You don't have the mindset yet. That's not to say you won't have it, but right now your expectation should be to lose. Mm. But what you need is a start point, right? So when you go to the gym, you wouldn't just chuck on 100 kilos on the bench press, right? You're going to go there and start on just the bar. Mm. And you're going to do that for a week and go, cool, well, I did that for 10 reps. Well, maybe I'll try 25 kilos now. And you do that. What you've got is a start point, right? That first time you finish a marathon, what was your time? It was 10 hours and 56 seconds. Cool. Well, how do I get that to nine hours in? Mm. So what I teach people to do is how many points did you score in each game? Mm. Oh, I scored 10. Cool. Well, you rocked up with a battle ready army. That's a start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So next tournament, how do we get you 15 points? Oh, I, I held an objective for a turn. Brilliant. So let's look at more strategies now to keep holding objectives. You can hold an objective every single turn. Yeah. Okay. Before you know it, more and more games are going by. You, you know, you, you're understanding where you're going wrong. Oh, I didn't score any secondaries. Mm. Okay, cool. Let's look at start how to actually score secondary missions. And you build this up to the point where you can get someone that can paint an army. That's where they can obviously come and see you for those first 10 points. And then, <laughs> and then they're with me, right? So you have to team up. Yeah. You help them get the first 10 yeah. and I'll help them get the rest of the 90. But, <laughs> hey, you need no, to, pressure, no pressure, PG. I, I, I'm, I'm the foundation. I'm the footings of the building. Well, yeah, yeah. You a, if you yeah. don't have a painted armour, you can't even turn up. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Anyway, yeah. it's like you're layering on the tan for the bodybuilders in their thongs, right? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you're like thong in tan, man, and then I'm like posing and muscle building. Anyway, we're getting off. We're getting sidetracked. <laughs> it's just <they're> good. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So we're going to get people to the point where they understand how to hold objectives. They understand... How they understand how to score their secondaries and then the next level of that is how do you deny your opponent primary points how do you deny your opponent secondary points mm, mm, and then you put all that together and all of a sudden those bigger points that you're scoring will now correlate to you being able to drive your opponent's score down equaling more winning of games yeah. but it's not the primary focus it's actually an end result of the steps that we put in place to get you there right Mega. there we go Amazing. That's, that's my answer. Nice. Fa yeah, fantastic. Next two, one. Two people have asked the same question. Uh, what's your favourite cheese? Mm, cheese. Mm. Do you like cheese? Yeah. Oh, oh it's a tough one then. It's a tough question. Cheesecake. Oh. Yeah. Cheesecake, cheese. Baked mm. or or not? To me, I'll take it out where it comes. Yeah. <laughs> First cheesecake on the menu, I'm having it. I'm a stickler for cheesecake. It has to be baked. The, the, the cold, cold... Molded ones just aren't. I, as quite good. Like I don't like the frozen ones so much, but yeah, like a it's good, good in, yeah. good in some, uh, summer when it's really hot. Yeah, it's yeah. like a sorbet. Um, I nice did have, yeah. did have a bit of brie this morning actually in my bagel. Oh, oh, yeah. But yeah. I do like a bit of camembert if you've got a good bit of dipping yeah, bread. Yeah. yeah, you know, I do like mozzarella. It's just you can't. Re I think a cheese question. There's got to be context to it because I don't want brie on my pizza. Yeah, you know, I want mozzarella, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very valid point. Yeah. That's a very valid point. It's like what's your favourite movie, isn't it? You go, well, what are we saying? Crime, thriller, science fiction, fantasy. It's it's too big a I'm, question, isn't yeah. it? I'm also going to go back to being an Audi sellout. Um, usually Valentine's Day, Christmas time, they tend to do like a bread sort of sharing. It's yeah. like garlicky bread, sort of like flavoured bread. Garlic and bread. Have, it's the future. I think it's <laughs> garlic <laughs> and bread. And they have camembert the in the middle. Oh. And you put it in the oven. And oh, it's, yes. Oh, so yeah. To die. yeah. You literally you Divine. Like a wedge of bread and you so, dip it in. Tear and share. So, yeah. 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 Tear and yeah. no sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got this. I don't share. <laughs> we get into the root cause, aren't we? <laughs> I like food. <laughs> Too much. Who doesn't share food? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay. Obviously, you are very adept with the 40k rule set. What are the game systems slash mechanics? Side. Oh, zombie side. Mm. Uh, do you enjoy zombie side? side? So can and, I? Do oh, go on. And then, how would you incorporate them into 40k if you could? I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, okay. I was actually having this conversation yesterday with someone. I was like, if we were to make a Zombicide, have you guys played Zombicide? I have I'm not. I'm aware of it. I've seen I, it. I see the box, it. and I'm like, maybe I've one. Play, I have, but I've only played the the right. medieval version, the, the Black Plague, right? Yeah, I've got every edition. I think 
we'll scrap this. We'll just play Zombicide, okay? <laughs> yeah. So more time than Zombicide. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I um, I actually really hate sci-fi things. Hmm. Just let that one sink in right now. <laughs> I hate sci-fi. You won't see me watch a sci-fi film. Hmm. I've got no time and place for it at all. You and Dave Andrews will get on really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But weirdly, I like Warhammer. Mm. And I think it's just been like drummed into me enough to... I like things that I can really... Um, and I think to some extent, in my opinion, I don't like Age of Sigma for this reason. I loved the old world because when you said this guy's got a great sword, I know what a great sword is. Mm -hmm. When you say I've got a longbow, mm, it's a bit longer than a short one. I yeah. got it, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. When you've got a star-forged... Arcane... Uh, it's a boy you're like <laughs> i'm like what is that it's good to sorry, again. What? <laughs> yeah it's... i'm on this world of such and such no i want to be an alt dwarf and i want to see i want to be at the i don't know where the rocks are and fighting in the mountains that's where i want to be mm. and i think for me when you've got a game that is so easy to go oh i've got an uzi you know what that is yeah or i've got a mm. flaming sword yeah right i've got sword flame put together special weapon cool got it yeah. right like, and I love Zombicide because it's cooperative. So equally, it's us. We're a team. We are trying to fend off the zombie mm. horde. And if I could just play one game for the rest of my life, it would just be Zombicide, I yeah. think. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I and I love escape rooms as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, I love cooperative stuff, yeah. Just yeah. My favorite I think you'll thing. be a fan of Warcry. Warcry has a fighter card. Yeah. And if you, depending on which fighter you pick, it has a picture of an axe. You look at your figure. Oh, that's the one with the axe. Yes. Cool. None of that nonsense. It's just mm. like, if you've got an axe, that's that's the statue. Thing. Also in Zombicide, you've, your cards are your weapons. So you uh, can like cool. search for weapons, right? But let's say you're in a fight and you don't have the right weapon to kill the guy or the zombie or whatever. You can be like, oh, chuck me your axe. And it's just like, you can yeah, yeah. spend an action for you to pass me your axe and I can use it and miss and be like, oh, damn, to pass <laughs> on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's just his axe is going around. <laughs> Hack off this song. Awesome. <laughs> it's great because it also gives you a real feeling of blind panic as well, doesn't it? Which you always think is good in a game when yeah. you're cooperative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, you get three actions, right? I've got to spend one action to take the axe from you. Okay, cool. What do I hit on? A four. Right, I got a 50 50 chance. You fail it. You're like, mm. right, try again. Failed it. Oh, we're running out of people now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you... that sounds awesome. Yeah, anyway, sorry. No, don't no, 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 no. Never apologise no, for being no, no. passionate no. about something. Mm, yeah, it's awesome. Play it. Oh, is it? Huh? It's, I've got it in the car, yeah. <laughs> and just as a side note, they, uh, they did a thing for Zombie Side for Black Plague where they did add-on packs with new characters in. And what they were done was they were... The characters were all designed by famous fantasy artists, so there's at least uh, two Adrian Smith packs of art of figures that he's designed. Amazing, yeah, amazing, it's a clever way cool. of doing it. I like that. I've also got the Night of the Living Dead edition. I've oh, got, right. I've got the Wild West edition where oh. there's a train. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I've got the cool. second edition game, probably my favourite. But anyway, yeah, they I've don't got hang Black around zombie side. Yeah, they, no. I've got the Marvel yeah. one where you play as zombie zombie side heroes. So I've, you play zombie Hulk. Ah, uh, so it's almost like the reverse. The, um, what, what what did they do? They, they did the cartoons. Yeah, the the, was, what, what yeah. They? Oh, what if? What if? So that was yeah, because yeah, you get like yeah. zombie Captain yeah. America and stuff. That's like that. exactly yeah. what you play yeah. as. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that one doesn't oh, quite cool. have that same feel for me because you feel like you're too invincible. Mm. You want to feel like guys, we need to tool up quick because yeah. these lads are coming yeah. thick and fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when you're the Hulk, you're like, I'm not the Hulk, just Hulk smash and you just bash everyone out of the way. It's a bit too. It doesn't have that same yeah. grittiness to mm. it. Yeah, you yeah. that sense of fear and you failure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Um, thoughts on how codexes will work in 10th now that the data cards have been released? I don't know if I can comment. Then don't. So no. I'm not going to... I'm going to say yeah. no comment on this one. Yeah, yeah. fair. I wouldn't want to put myself in a situation where I yes. later regret. So yeah. um, apparently there are some. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Smooth. Because you... <laughs> You've got a job to protect, man. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, I asked Dave and I'll ask Stephen, what's the best arm exercise for a starty sized arms? Ooh, okay. So if you want... Genetic engineering. You want genetic engineering, <laughs> yeah. To six. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of um, uh, uh, protein. Um, yeah, that's I'm sure what those space marines are taking is protein, yeah. Just, you know, a good bit of chicken breast in there, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so best arm exercise is you want to really work both the bicep and the tricep. And to do that, you want to normally do an exercise that works from the 
bottom range of the muscle mm. and then the top range. So two bicep exercises, two tricep exercises, hit them. I don't know if I was really wanted big arms, I'd probably train arms every other day, but maybe two to three working sets, take it to failure, good amount of protein and mm. your arms should get bigger. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Keep it simple. Yeah. Fantastic. Keep it simple. Yeah. Repetition is key. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a tournament, would you prefer to choose the new secondaries or randomise them? Okay, good question. Mm. I thought when I first heard, or it came to my attention, that we'd be playing random cards. Do you remember the ones back in like 8th edition? And you were like, defend objective... Oh, yes. Yeah, defend yeah, yeah. objective 2, and you'd look over and go, oh, no. Yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. And then the next one's defend objective 5. Where's that one? Is that on my side? No. no. <laughs> Next one. Kill a character. You got any? No. no. <laughs> should, should we call this game done then? <laughs> so when I first heard that, I was like, oh no. But actually, I've been impressed. Mm. And I think the skill now, and this is something we're really going to be teaching on our academy and list building, is all about how do you play for scoring in a random or mm. tactical fashion. That's clever. Uh, because if you have the opportunity, take it because you'll be rewarded more points more frequently um, than if you play fixed. So fixed, you'll get like a set amount if you can achieve them. But when you play randomly, it will open up you to a greater level of scoring. Interesting. That's not always going to be the case. I think yeah. it's going to be matchup dependent. The skill is going to be analysing what do I need to do with my army in this situation on this mission against that opponent. And then, you know, because your opponent might have a particular army, but if you, you need to understand their play style and then the army's play style, because you could play against somebody where they play very defensively with an army that might actually give up loads of secondary points, but the way they play it might skew how that game's going to go versus how you think they're going to play it or how the person before it played the army. Yeah. So many factors there come into play when you're picking secondaries. Yeah. Mm, cool. That's wild. Um, how do you manage 40k burnout? Running a 40k business, competing in tournaments and being a keen hobbyist must be very time and energy consuming. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you manage it? Uh, yeah, like I like doing escape rooms. I like playing Zombicide. Um, I also have a time and a place when, you know, I've been added to Facebook groups and stuff. And sometimes I'm just like, look guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to join this Facebook group because, you know, I need a bit of time, yeah. work-life balance as it were, or mm. I'm, I think I am good at disconnecting from the hobby when I need to, mm. but I also find painting very therapeutic. So me sitting at home and painting a model, I do not necessarily think of as work. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a bit of chill time for me. Or if I'm playing Total War, although yeah. it's a Warhammer game, it's still chill time for me. I, I have very similar uh, situations. Like when in the army painting team, you, you're constantly like doing like, so much stuff in such a short space of time. It's like, yeah. How do you deal with the burnout of like painting stuff for work and then having your own hobby? It's like, well, I do a different version at home. If I'm doing like loads of space means at work, I'm going to do Lord of the Rings or yeah. Napoleonics. It's, it's, it sounds weird, but just at a little step away. Yeah. Even if it is miniatures, it does. Yeah. Even well, if it's a computer game, like I said, like Total War, it's still the hobby, but it's different. Yeah. Or well, put my manner. podcast on. Yeah. Listen to my favourite, you know, crime thriller or catch up with some TV shows yeah, I like. Yeah. Or, you know, me and my girlfriend will watch a video, like a film, and she'll cut out all the sprues. Nice. I'll build them. But you know now with sprues, right? Yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, like... this is going. <laughs> certain parts go in certain places and yeah yeah and then I had to one day we built this kit which was real easy you could just cut mm. off anything because she she doesn't like scraping mm. right taking mould lines off she doesn't like gluing either so she's just a clipper <laughs> and I'm the scraper and gluer anyway fine it's still you know a bit more productive than me doing it until we got that kit where I realised you can't just cut off all the arms no, no. Nope. You can't just do this now. This is... It's next level confusion. This is a pain in the ass. Do you know what the best kit we ever did, though, was the um, Curse City box models. Mm. You didn't even need glue for those. No. no she no. actually really enjoyed putting... Like, we're talking about somebody that 
got no real, real interest in playing the game or whatever. Doesn't mind mm. putting the models together, but really enjoyed putting those together because they were just like push fit, mm. but cleanly done. They didn't look yeah. derpy. Yeah, they were a really and good set of models. Very little, uh, I forget what it's called now, plate panel. Mm. Uh, so you, everything's within that. And I sometimes find that with a lot, like a lot of kits and a lot of non games workshop stuff. They were uh, like Star Wars Legion, for instance. It's like a and it'll have like a load of numbers like yeah. for like a clone or like a droid it'll be like A and then there'll be B and then there'll be C be like A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so I could just take that section it's like a cluster yeah yeah so just like, I, I know if I clip, clip all that it's for the same guy and I put that in a pile clip all that one that's for that guy um, but I've from a converter's point of view I and something me and Wade used to talk about a lot was like the Tempest Scions for instance their arms fit with particular backpacks so this arm yeah. is cut off at the uh, the wrist and it goes with this particular gun because the wrist is in a set place but that cable goes with this particular backpack yeah it's it, for, from a converter's point of view I clip them all out because I'm now playing with different poses but I always cut the cable off because I don't need a big cable that goes from the backpack it's just a backpack that's the gun it's got mm. a mag in it so I just cut the I just cut the pipes off so that's my way of dealing with that so I can use any backpack Peachy. I'm a cable cutter as well. <laughs> I'm a detail cutter. Yeah. I just remove like extra little details I, off models. Sometimes when there's some, some people in my studio, they're like, oh, um, do, do you want me to put these? If your answer, if your question's about, do you want me to put them grenades on? The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do like my gene stealer cult, right? They've got these little rucksacks on the back of their bikes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <sighs> my boys are riding lean. Yeah. yeah lightweight bikes. I don't yeah, put yeah. rucksacks on my bike. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there is, to some extent, in my opinion, now, I'm not the greatest painter. I just like to, you know, paint my models. I think models are, to some extent, getting a bit too detailed now. I had the same conversation with Richard Gray. Yeah. Mm. they Yeah, I think they're getting a bit too much, especially scenery. We don't need that many skulls on scenery. Yeah. Mm. No, no, no. It's to make it 40k so you can't use them elsewhere. That's why they, they do it. What skulls? Yeah, if you put it was such a weird move, and a lot of people used to use workshop hills or walls and fences for historicals, and they didn't like that. Why? Because it's for workshop. It's it's you want to keep it within their own sort of environment. So I, I don't Hang understand it. I'm not saying Can it's I, right, but, but there was definitely he's no longer there. There was someone that didn't like that because it's Warhammer. It's not like this, and they felt like skulls is the way to do it because it makes it very Warhammery. Yeah, so yeah, you're not going to have an opponent army with a big skull and crust and I mean, shrine. I think, ima their, imagine the extra thinking. income coming in, though, from yeah. other... Mm. But skulls, yeah. like, they're quite a common thing, though, I'm sure, on a but battlefield. It's scale, isn't it? Yeah. So if you're doing 28 mil World War Two, having skulls on a hill, well, I suppose it's doable, but they're really but, large skulls. But do you think <laughs> if... Yeah, or an orc skull or something like that, yeah. <laughs> But I can't imagine if I was playing World War Two and I thought, oh, Games Workshop makes some really cool hills. Mm. But, um, ah, oh, but, but Mike, there's a skull on there. <laughs> we probably shouldn't use that hill. Oh, yeah, you're right. Don't, don't care, use it. You're right, <laughs> yeah. Jeremy. We all <laughs> stick that. a rock on it. <laughs> yeah, I was just, uh, you, yeah, you got a tuft. I got a tuft. Yeah, yeah, no there skull, go, yeah. no problem. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm probably doing it a disservice to a certain degree because um, Dave used to do a lot of the scenery. He had to make it feel more Warhammer. Because of those, you know, you can't just make a hill now. It has to be what makes this different from World War Two. Mm. What so, makes it a Warhammer hill? Yeah, yeah. So but, it was like pushing it to the to the point where it became a bit more sort of not restrictive, but you know, a bit silly. Just yeah, like, it was like um, I, I tried to well, I paint up the boarding actions terrain, right? Mm. And there's enough detail on there already. You don't need the skulls, like yeah. maybe one or two, but not like twenty on a panel. You're like, come on, this is a bit much. This is too many skulls yeah. because. When you don't paint them, it's obvious that you haven't. Yeah. Um, there's enough like lenses on there and screens to make it look really good. It yeah. looks like a boarding action's terrain, but for me, the skulls ain't. It looks worse that I haven't painted them yeah, yeah. than it does if they just weren't there. Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, painting skulls is not that easy because you know you need at least four coats of. Uh, yeah. It, it, whatever to make it look good, right? Because you've got to get like some kind of bone tone on there, yeah. and then you've got to shade it, and then yeah. And if you've Nine gone over, ten, a highlight. and if you've gone over with a metallic, you know it's going to take a few coats. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is just yeah. <laughs> Fundamentals should be an option to glue on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Optional yeah. skulls, optional, optional skulls. skulls. Yeah. That's the most Warhammer thing ever. Because yeah, then you could just this is what I did with my skulls. Just you know, you can get actually the skull pack. Mm. You can just 
spray all them. Yeah. In one go. On. Yeah. Dip them in wash. Yeah. Poke them on. Yeah. Literally dip it in like... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Skull's done for you. Yeah. 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 Optional skulls, by the way, it's going to be in with my new heavy metal band. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I like it. So I think we're rapidly approaching the two hour mark. So this might be the last question. Sorry. No, uh, no, no. Don't, don't, don't apologise. Yeah, yeah. So someone has said they joined your beginner program. Outstanding production values and easy to follow. Um, and they're glad they did. Question. If you could introduce the same program for another system, what would you do? More time. <laughs> <laughs> don't be, no, don't be leading the interviewer. <laughs> the interviewee. See it. To some extent, we've only got a certain amount of capacity on these courses. I think more time would just we'd be we'd be at capacity too fast, you know. Yeah, if yeah, I was to offer yeah. that, so yeah. let's bring it down a little bit, a little bit less mainstream for more time. Yeah, the yeah. best game yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, what would I do it for? I have played a bit of Age of Sigma, hmm. and I don't mind it as a little bit of a dabble game. Um, I'm really interested in the old world. Hmm. For me, depending on how, how that game system comes out what it plays like what the model range is going to be and i think also for my audience specifically in the i suppose like the demographic they're probably sitting in the same you know kind of camp of me of age group that the old world would feel quite nostalgic mm. where if if a 40k player played warhammer fantasy they might not have played sigma and they might not be playing sigma for the uh, a particular reason um, maybe it doesn't resonate with them very well, which is fair enough. Um, I do actually think Sigma's a good game. Um, but, yeah, maybe the old world could be the one that I next do a course for. But, again, it all depends on the the interest, right? Mm. It really, de- you know, if we get a, put a pre-order out and, you know, we get X amount of sign-ups on it, then it, it's worth it because for us to put together a course, let's take the beginner course, for example, you're looking at, like... <sighs> The best part of a week planning, three to four days of filming, and then another week of editing, so that when you put all the the hours in for the wages, the rent, the studio, the equipment we need, you know, even things like need to buy a new computer to have all the processing power required to produce at that level. Yeah. Um, all the graphics need to be done. So I've got like a graphic designer now who works with us full time just to, nice. um, you know, make sure everything looks great. He's also does our website. We then need to build a shopping cart, marketing, advertisement, social media posts. You're oh. looking like potentially for a team of, what is there, four of us now full time? Probably like a month solid of work, right? Yeah. And you weigh that up and you think, right, well, how many how many places have you got to sell? Take off VAT, take off tax, pay everyone. You're like, well, what are we left with? So there has to be, to some extent, enough demand to even warrant doing it. It's yeah. not like we can do it yeah. just yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, otherwise, the business would, it would have folded years ago. Yeah. You, you, to some extent, you have to be a bit shrewd with what content you make and why. Hmm. And are you going to see, not like... Yeah, I suppose you do need to see a return on investment Mm -hmm. um, with everything you do. Um, So, yeah, maybe if there's enough interest for it, I'll do it. That is absolutely... I'm not opposed to playing any of the games or making any of the courses. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It's the logistics. Yeah, Yeah, logistics, yeah. When we have that all the time, I've got all these plans of, like, Warcry bands, Necromunda war bands, every faction possible. It just doesn't always work. Yeah. Don't, Don't have the time, so... Yeah. Brilliant. Cool. Right, then, before we wrap up, haven't you got an offer? Yes. An offer we can't refuse. Well, yeah. Which we won't. So what, <laughs> I, what I need you to do is, uh, I think, if anybody does want to jump on any of the courses, whether it's the Start Playing or the Accelerator, so the Start Playing is for beginners, the Accelerator course is to take anybody from ninth to 10th to have like that seamless transition so you get your rules right. But then we've got the Academy, which is our much longer course as well. So you guys need to give me a name. I'm then going to put a 10 behind it and that'll be your discount code for being patrons or viewers of the show yeah. uh, as a bit of a thank you. So um, you. whatever you guys want it to be. I guess it makes you. sense the painting phase. Does it have to be a certain amount of characters? Probably the shorter the better. Peg. Peg. <laughs> Peg 10. <laughs> Peg 10 it is. There we Peg. go. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Peg 10. Go. So, You're not worried. <laughs> no, I love it. I actually love it. <laughs> Love a bit pegging. Um, you know, you've Good. got to... Thank you. Appreciate Love it. That. Yeah. I'm not sure that's the first time he's been pegged by no, you. No, it's not. It's the second time I've been pegged, yeah. actually. So, yeah. He liked it so much the first time. I yeah. thought, why are we second? 
Um, so yeah, Peg Ten used that at the checkout, and you know, helps us all out, right? Yeah. So it's very yeah. kind of you. Yeah, thank it's you very, very much. Kind of you on, but and thank you on behalf of our viewers for that. It's very good of you. Yeah, yeah. And cool. if you enjoyed this, don't forget to the like and subscribe. And of course, check out our Patreon because you get to see this guy early, as well as all the benefits we have on Patreon as well. That's some one-to-one -one sessions with me, if that's the kind of thing you're into. And you might get pegged. Maybe. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> much appreciated, Thank my man. Yeah. Thanks for coming. It's, it's been, been awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a good chat. Talked about you in thongs. Well, you need to bring back the butler stories, though. Yeah, we do. We, we need yeah. a second session. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's for Patreons only, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>